Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Live special number 160, recorded June 10th, 2013. WWDC and Xbox One. Twit Live breaking news coverage is brought to you by Slingbox. Hook up your Slingbox to your home theater system, then take it anywhere in the world. Try it today at Best Buy or Amazon, or check it out at slingbox.com slash twit. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our live coverage of Apple's WWDC keynote, plus a little Microsoft coverage on the side. Leo Laporte here. It's Magnificent Monday. That's what I'm going to call it. Three big announcements from three big companies. Microsoft has already kicked off, and in just a moment, we'll talk to Glenn Rubenstein, who's watching the Xbox Live at announcement uh, at uh, E3. In about uh, 15 minutes, Microsoft, I mean, sorry, Apple, you, you'll forgive me, I'm going to be confused all through the day. Apple will kick off its WWDC keynote. We expect uh, news of iOS 7. Uh, according to some rumors yesterday, including John Grumber, prepared to be amazed, perhaps annoyed. Also new hardware we expect, MacBooks, perhaps a Mac Pro, and uh, a look at the next version of OS X. Later today, it'll be Sony 530 this afternoon, uh, all of these three. So uh, we're going to get uh, set up here and begin our coverage. Uh, I was uh, mentioning before we began, and I'll mention it again, that uh, both the Microsoft Stream and the Apple Stream are available to you directly if you should choose to watch it without commentary. Whenever we do these kinds of uh, meta uh, coverage of these events, people say, just shut up and let us uh, watch. And I just want to point out, you can. And thank you, Apple, for making that possible. If you have an Apple TV, you'll find it there. If you have iOS, uh, apparently you'll find it. I'm actually running over to look. They just updated uh, this morning the WWDC app on iOS. And what I'm hoping is they're going to stream it through that. Uh, they do say that if you have iOS 4.2 or later, you'll be able to watch the stream. Maybe that's on Safari. You will need Safari on a Mac or, I presume, a PC uh, to watch it as well. Uh, Apple.com slash Apple-events slash June-2013 if you want to know more. Are we prepared to go up to the Sky booth and uh, say hi to Jeff and Glenn? I don't know if we have that capability yet or not. We're in the middle of a transition from TNT. They're, they're pushing buttons as we speak. <laughs> Test one, two. Yes, it's Glenn Rubenstein. Hey, Glenn, Perfect. you're watching the Microsoft announcement. You're going to be our Microsoft reporter. What's going on so far? Uh, so far, they showed a trailer for Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain, which is going to feature open world exploration and real-time weather effects. And now they're talking about games that are coming to the Xbox 360 before they jump into the Xbox One titles. Really? They're talking 360? Yeah. How interesting. Yeah, I see a picture of the Xbox 360 yeah. with the old Kinect, the old controller. Uh, they're now talking about Xbox Live Gold membership. So, yeah. uh, as we expected, because of the Xbox One reveal last month, uh, which was uh, all about hardware, this should be mostly about software. Uh, I just I see now two free games per month for Xbox Live Gold members. So, what we're going to be very interested in is Microsoft, if they'll comment at all, correct me if I'm wrong, Glenn, on this issue of re uh, used games. Yeah. That's one big question. There are actually three questions that have come up since the Xbox One reveal. Well, people want to know about connectivity, so they announced that you're going to have to connect your system once every 24 hours. Once a day. Playing. You're going to have new family accounts where you can have up to 10 people on your account, but only one at a time can be playing games. And then there is the used game, game right. rental issue, which Microsoft has kicked back to the publishers. They're only going to be allowing, allowing that uh, on titles at their discretion. Interesting, because they're also, at this point, highlighting Xbox 360. And one of the things they're saying is this transition to Xbox 360, or to Xbox One, is going to be gradual. That they're not killing the Xbox 360. Well, no, as they're showing right now, Grand Theft Auto V is coming out for the 360 quite soon. And, I mean, that's that's going to be a huge, huge title. Um, I believe, Jeff, uh, you were monitoring. They're announcing uh, that they're going to be launching a revamped Xbox 360. Yes, a smaller, quieter, more power-efficient Xbox 360. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I'm looking at the at the image that they're showing. It looks that's the new one. That's the new one. Yeah. Okay, doesn't look that different. No, no, at all. <laughs> I guess it's smaller. A little slicker. And there will be games custom built for Xbox 360. This is the uh, Verge's live 
blog. I don't know how companies like The Verge are going to handle this, but I suspect they'll have live blogs from both events. And then um, before they get to catch a breath, 5.30 this evening, Pacific time, it'll be Sony. We're getting set up over here. I want to remind you our live coverage of breaking news is always brought to you by the great folks at Slingbox. A Slingbox 500, now with built-in Wi-Fi, HDI, HDMI connectivity, full 1080p, high-def streaming over the Internet. In a nutshell, Slingbox allows you to connect your existing TV setup, your home theater at home, to the Internet so you can, with password protection, watch your TV anywhere. On a computer, yes, but also on your iPad, your Android device, your iPhone as well. High-def TV. It really makes an iPad sing. There's the Slingbox 350 and the new Slingbox, newer Slingbox 500. Never miss a show you want to watch in high-def. You can get your Slingbox today at Best Buy or Amazon. And find out more at slingbox.com slash twit. The new Slingbox, the Slingbox app, it's the way to watch your home system anywhere you go. In about uh, 13 minutes, Apple's going to take to the stage. I'll be very interested to see if Apple is as punctual as Microsoft has been. Uh, at, the, at the Microsoft event, in fact, at the Google I.O. event, uh, they had countdown clocks and were right on time at Google I.O., they were to the second, beginning exactly on time. Uh, a little bit of a challenge to Apple, which is, to my knowledge, never started exactly on time. The live blogs right now are, are, are running through their predictions and, as usual, talking about the Apple playlist, trying, <laughs> trying to parse the uh, choice of songs. Uh, we're going to get set up here. Sarah Lane is going to join us in a moment. Uh, Andy Anako, will he be joining us? I'm not sure who the list of, uh, of uh, commentators will be. Alex Lindsay, Sarah Lane. Tom Merritt. All right. Andy Anako is staying home uh, this week. He could have gone, but he decided he wanted to watch from uh, home. Um, we do have Tom on right now. FYI. Great. Hey, Tom can join us. Hey, I see him. Hello. Hi, Tom Merritt. Thank you for joining us. You bet. What do we expect Apple to announce? You've been covering this. Yeah, the, the best bets, obviously, are iOS 7 with the new flatter Johnny Ive design. In fact, there was a lot of leaks today saying that it's going to be multicolored, uh, but simple iconography and uh, some OS 10 announcement that nobody really seems that interested in speculating about because everybody's distracted by iOS. We might get a laptop refresh. That's a lower possibility. Everybody thinks we'll probably get a new Mac Pro. That's still a lower possibility than the iOS 7. I think that's going to, iOS 7 is going to dominate it. And iRadio, uh, whatever they call it, some kind of streaming music subscription service. John Gruber yesterday uh, said, prepare to be surprised. He also commented, this is a remarkable uh, uh, time in that he knows so little. Uh, the rumor mill has really been shut down uh, this year. Uh, he points on his Daring Fireball blog to uh, the quote from Tim Cook a year ago at All Things D. We're going to double down on security or secrecy on the products. And in fact, uh, it seems like they've done a good job. No one seems to know exactly what Apple's going to announce. Although the leaks yesterday implied that people might be shocked and awed and perhaps disappointed by the new iOS 7. Awe, huh? I made that up. <laughs> I thought of pulling a little George Bush on I us. think that there are going to be a lot of, just because, um, I mean, you change a font style and everyone is crazy, yeah. right? At least for a few minutes because it's different and, and, and you've got everybody who resists change. So I think that that's inevitable no matter what is different. I just like to point out they're playing Daft Punk Time right now. What do you think that means? A new clock app? I certainly hope so. Yeah, yeah. a better alarm. <laughs> better alarm Something system, Something that makes obviously. me less tired when I hear it. Did you guys see the color scheme of the WWDC logo, which is often indicative of something we're going to see? It feels we, kind of glowy. Yeah, we've talked a lot about that, and, and a number of uh, people on MacBreak Weekly poo-pooed it, but I kind of agree with you. I think, if anything, uh, WWDC, the WWDC app is going to be the one. There it is. That, now, that's not the icon. That's actually... Um, the WWDC image. The icon on the app is dark, is a gr slight gradient of purple to dark purple with a fairly flat, although not completely flat, as it looks to me, Apple logo on top of it. It's very simple. And certainly the uh, WWDC uh, app itself is, is very simple, but that does not mean that that's what uh, iOS 7 is going to look like. Um, uh, you know, some of the mock-ups we've seen are quite dramatically different, including narrower fonts. I think a lot of that is 
is just rank speculation. People want to get All the signage hits. up at WWDC has those narrow fonts too. Really? Again, that doesn't necessarily mean right. anything. But right. they all, they have, it almost looks like little squares of gel, like gels that you put over lights uh, is is what's scattered behind all of this on the uh, all of the lettering right. on the signage there. Yeah, that and that's the invitation as well. You've got yeah. to Googly colors, I have to point out. I don't know if that was intentional. <laughs> uh, this is WWDC MMXIII. That's, they've decided to go Roman numeral on us. If Johnny Ive goes Roman numeral, I'm, uh, I'm going to worry a little bit. <laughs> Sir Johnny Ive probably won't take the stage. He never has in the past. He always shows up in a empty white Somebody box. Somebody had a uh, picture of him, snapped on Instagram, of him walking in uh, to the, to sitting, the show this sitting, morning. Sitting in the audience. Was he dressed no, in a was patchwork in off the cloak street of slides to the, uh, oh. to, the, to the conference? Center. Well, maybe he would. It would be a. It would be. And someone a, said those aren't his signature gray pants. <laughs> It'd be a break in tradition, but it would be wonderful to see Johnny himself, wouldn't it? Talk about well, the changes. To you know, iOS. things are different for him now. I mean, the, he's he's in a different role. He's going to be credited with pretty much everything that that is different about iOS. So it might be it might make sense for for him to to speak. In the past, these uh, keynotes have always been led off by the CEO, Steve Jobs, for years recently, uh, Tim Cook, then followed up by uh, Chief of Marketing Phil Schiller. Uh, mm -hmm. In the past, iOS has always been Scott Forstall's bailiwick. No Scott Forstall to talk this year. So it'll be uh, interesting to see if Craig Federighi, who runs iOS, uh, will be on stage or maybe. And I would love to see this, and I would, I would hope that Apple uh, would do it, Johnny Ive. Apple is breaking precedent. They're streaming. Uh, if you have an Apple TV, uh, we can pull it up, uh, the stream. Actually, should we do that? Um, would it be easier to do that, Jason, uh, from the Apple TV or from the web? Because if you have a, a Safari on a Mac, we can also... Yeah, let's see here. We do have a Mac and the router. We also have iOS uh, 4.2 oh. or later. Okay. The problem is we're running out of inputs on the I know, I know. We only. <laughs> I know. We only can get eight things at a time on. <laughs> which makes it a little hard to do anything more than an Octobox. Uh, I'll see what I can do. There is a long VLC link. Bill Hicks has just posted that in our chat room. And by the way, if you're not in our chat room, we invite you to join us there. IRC.twit.tv for uh, Maybe commentary. Maybe can play the show. Wouldn't that be fun? Uh, if, you, if anybody is in the chat room and could pull up the VLC stream, that might be the way uh, to do it. That will give you Windows uh, access as well. Um, and, and as I mentioned, the iPad, if you're using a relatively recent version of uh, iOS. If Johnny Ive comes out on stage, do they have to surround him in white somehow? Yeah, put him in a white box. You know, that's how he's always made his appearances as, as, at these keynotes. And now a short film. And, uh, and then you get Johnny Ive and some of the other people. Uh, I think he's virtual. Yeah, they we've just, never they seen... They just hire a cosplayer to come to the, <laughs> sit in the audience. That's why we know the pants are wrong. There's a, there's a definite uh, clue there. Yeah, let's the shadows uh, let's in the check room. in because uh, Microsoft continues uh, with its Xbox uh, One announcement. Glenn Rubenstein's covering that for us. Glenn, are they uh, still on Xbox 360 or have they moved on to the One? They've moved on. They've just started showing the first of the new Xbox One games, although they did make some news with 360. Uh, we talked about the new 360 model. It's available today. Also, starting now, two free games a month if you're an Xbox Live Gold subscriber. The first two they're going to be giving away are Halo 2 and Assassin's Creed 3. Halo. Wow. Oh, uh, Halo, uh, sure. Halo 3 and Assassin's three. Creed 2. And Assassin's uh, Creed vice 2. versa, that yeah. Yes. That makes more sense. <laughs> and they're going to be doing uh, two games a month until the Xbox One launches. That's a great deal because yeah. it's $99 a year for Xbox Gold Live. And uh, if you include the two free games, you're getting a hell of a deal. Oh, definitely. And, and you know, there's though, a precedent right? for yeah. this. I mean, PlayStation Plus has done this for a while now. Sony has right. done this for a while with that subscription. And these aren't the latest uh, games, obviously. They're showing Rise now, Son of Rome. This is RYSE, one of the games people have been very interested in. This is an Xbox One game. Uh, tell me about Rise. What do you? Uh, what do we expect with that? Uh, it looks like there were gladiators, and originally they showed outer space. So no. right there, wow. I'm intrigued <laughs> when you mix the two. I think the important thing uh, that I'm getting from this press conference so far is if the first Xbox One press conference was about TV, 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 sports, TV, 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 today is about games, 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 and thank God. Because and a lot games. of us were very worried. And no Call of Duty yet. Yeah, not yet. They got their day in the sun. <laughs> all right, Glenn Rubenstein and Jeff Niels will continue to cover the uh, Xbox announcement. We want to make sure you get all the information uh, that you're counting on. We are uh, counting four minutes away from the technical start time for WWDC. As I mentioned, Google has been right on time. Microsoft has been right on time. Apple's not historically right on time, but we shall see. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give a higher uh, likelihood of new laptop hardware than you did, uh, Tom, because I really think... 
with the new Haswell chips. This is absolutely Apple's time to announce new hardware. They announced the MacBook Retina 15-inch last year at WWDC. This is developer hardware to some degree. And uh, I, I am wondering about a Mac Pro. We saw a really interesting mock-up of a Mac Pro that looked like a unibody box. Uh, with It said dual graphics cards and Thunderbolt. And what do you think about the possibility of there being a Retina Air with the chips that are powerful enough? They're, they're designed to give you a lot more battery life, right? But Airs have pretty good battery life as opposed to, to Pros. So if the battery life can stay the same and power a Retina screen, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, Haswell gives you 50% improvement in battery life. That seems to be generally accepted. And uh, a much better graphics uh, built-in graphics card, probably one sufficient to drive Retina. So I guess it's a question of cost and thickness. Mm -hmm. But we'll we'll have to see. I would jump at a Retina. Uh, is the uh, Apple Store down still, right? Yeah, the, the Apple Store has been down. And yeah, we're gonna get something, right? Because the store is yeah. down. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we better. They pull the store down if somebody sneezes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> App Apple's infrastructure on the store is not notoriously uh, great. Yeah, uh, they apparently do a lot of stuff by hand, uh, and so the "Will Be Back" logo is fairly common. Um, oh, I, see, I, see. Uh, I do think you're right this. about the uh, the Mac Pro being probably the most likely, in my opinion, uh, because it's a developers' conference, and developers really want that. So, do you think they would do an Air, or would it be a MacBook Pro laptop that would be more likely? And that's a really good question because uh, I think it's you know some we talked about this yesterday on uh, Twit. And some people felt that the cheese grater, even though it's a two and a half year old, the most recent Mac Pro is two and a half years old, and the cheese grater design itself is more like five years old. Um, some said, why throw that out? I don't know. I think towers are not. Uh, I think this is the chance for Apple to show off Thunderbolt and, um, and maybe make something that has Thunderbolt connectivity in such a way that you can modularize it. That's what I'm kind of hoping for. A modular. Yeah, I think that, that cheese grater form factor is just bulky it's heavy mm -hmm. and i think if they come out with a mac mini sized mac pro people are going to slobber for that you know the idea of having the same amount of power in a compact design david bix in our chat room says wwdc transcends developers now it is after all apple's only True. scheduled keynote is that the case though do you feel like uh, uh, that it this is this is going to be more than just developer talk well, I think WWDC, I mean, besides the fact that it's called a developer's conference, uh, there's a lot of information for consumers as well. Sure. I mean, the, it's a, it's a week-long uh, uh, sequence of, of, of events that are, are geared towards the people who are making the apps and the software that we're using. But I, I, I certainly get a lot out of it. Oh, we, we all do. This is it. This is the big media event. Yeah. At least the scheduled one. Len, we're looking at Rise, Son of Rome. I think it's now apparent that it's 300 in space. <laughs> well, what's cool about this is uh, people are reporting that this is actual gameplay we're seeing. This isn't a pre-rendered demo. I hate cutscenes. Actually, they're playing this on the stage. That's cool, because you can't tell what it's going to be see like. button presses and stuff yeah. coming up. It's really cool. So you're a Roman gladiator, a legionnaire in... <laughs> In the future. The future, the past, maybe long, long ago. Who knows, uh, really? Yeah, it's very bloody, very, very action-packed. Interesting. Yeah. It's it's an interesting take on kind of the Call of Duty-style gaming. Are they in space? Because well, I want them to be in space. I don't, I don't know. know. What is that? that is I'm not sure. Maybe it's not space. I don't know. It's like I have the yeah. look at, what, what, is, what does that look like? I can't. <laughs> that looks like they're in, uh, I, you know, it's hard to tell. Well, the initial cutscene was like a coliseum floating in space, and there was some voiceover. So. so there may be some space involved. There could be. <laughs> Keep my fingers crossed. So if you're just joining us, you're watching our live coverage of a whole lot of stuff. I'm calling it Magnificent Monday. It is uh, right now Microsoft on stage at E3, but in just a few minutes. In fact, it's scheduled for right now. Can we get that live stream up? No, no, no. Are we having any luck with that? Uh, Apple is supposed to take the stage. Uh, we will be commenting behind a, li a, a live feed because for the, the first time in a couple of years, Apple is going to stream this live. If you People have are Apple being TV ordered to uh, turn off their cell phones or at least silent mode. So There you go. There's a picture. Pretty soon. Oh, I've that's, been warned. Yeah, that's a, There's a moving picture. Yeah, that's... that's but it's not that's, moving. That's, it's that's real life. That's like Harry Potter pan. stuff. There we go. Wow. All right. So uh, if you can get the audio up on that too, that'd be great. So this is exciting. This is... Uh, 
of all the events it's we the cover. It's the red wedding of announcements today. It's the red wedding. Let's Spoilers. Not. <laughs> this is, this. So it's Dr. Mom in chat. <laughs> I like My it. My goodness. I like it. <laughs> Uh, if I they think... start playing the Reigns of Castamere, you run. <laughs> you run. Scott, if you're in the audience, Scott Forstall, I'd get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, Forstall is the one who's pulling up. Yeah. Maybe he's no, going to be spoilers. doing it. Move your mouse. Yeah. Move your mouse. <laughs> so the music is still playing. Very big audience. This is Moscone uh, West, weekend. which can handle uh, 5,500 people. It's weird. Um, it's a large, large theater, and it is full. Usually, Apple packs the front rows with Apple employees. Um, Sarah Lane, have you Shazammed this song yet? I know what this song is. Killer Instinct. <laughs> it's um, it's uh, oh, wow. well, it's Vampire Weekend, and it's I forget the name of the song. It starts with an A, but yeah, it's like on their first album. Yeah, it's an old one. I don't know why they wouldn't play one of the new songs. So again, if you want to watch without commentary. Fire up your Apple TV or your Safari browser or your iOS Safari Total Mortal Kombat. and go to Apple Events. It's Mortal Kombat with Rise? Is this still Rise? No, it's a different game. This different is a Konami instincts. game. A sequel to the game that put Rare on the map with the N64. All right. So exclusive to the Xbox One. Interesting. A Nintendo game exclusive to Xbox. Well, it was Rare, but it was published through Nintendo. Interesting. So, yeah. All right, so... Uh, All right, so we've... Uh, <laughs> we, this is a new logo, Xbox One live coverage. I think we want to take that down right now because Tim Cook seems to be taking the stage. Yeah, well, there good. There we go. We got, we got two, two... We left. got them both. Here I'll we go. Can you go full screen on that, or is that not possible? Let's see. You don't have... Uh, there you go. See that? Boom. We start to confuse... Ooh, a flat video. ...with joy. Abundance. Yeah. Thank goodness they've choice. taken the 3D out of all their videos. Way Flatten that stuff. Designing something requires... Focus and rounded edges. First thing we ask is, what do we want people to feel? I don't know if that's really the first thing you should be Rage. Asking. Delight. Surprise. <laughs> Love. Connection. Then we begin to craft around our intention. So this is, if you're showing a video like this, this is saying, get ready, we're going to make some changes here. It takes yeah. time. You're about to see a style you've never seen before. Yeah. I kind of love this. There a nose. Reminds me a little of World of Goo. Yeah, it does. It's kinda very gooey. <laughs> yeah. It's kinda, dots joined by wires. Has that feel, For it? every yes, we simplify. We perfect. We start over. And we're going to start over now until everything we touch... Turns to gold. Oh. Enhances each life. Lannister gold. It touches. I think you, 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 there's a fine line here between uh, saying we're really thinking about you and going, like, you know, a little too far. And this might be right on the edge of schmaltzy. <sighs> I don't know. I know. Here comes Tim Cook. Hey, Let's Tim. listen in. Tom Merritt, Sarah Lane, Can Leo Can I call Laporte, you Tim? WWDC. Pretty much on time. Only four minutes late. You're watching live coverage of both WWDC and Microsoft's Xbox One. I'm really glad you like that. Those words mean a great deal to us, and you'll see that reflected throughout the show today. Welcome to the Worldwide Developers Conference. You're going to have an incredible week. This is our 24th WWDC. It's the longest running developer conference that we're aware of. It's truly worldwide. We have attendees this morning for over 60 countries. And two thirds of the people in the audience today are here for the first time. As uh, E. Kardashinsky in our chat room points out, Tim called this a show. No hazing from the upperclassmen. Huh? Oh? We've got oh, a great jokes. week planned for you with over Hopefully not a show sessions, like Samsung. over 120 hands-on labs so you can bring in your code, get some help tuning it, or get just about any question answered. We also have over a thousand engineers here this week, so grab them, make use of them. They're here to help. But don't they really are future trying to fire up the developers here? Now, yeah. The developer program is incredibly vibrant. We have over six million registered developers, with one and a half million of those added in the last year alone. 
Demand for this show has never been greater. We sold out in just over a minute. I'm really sorry we couldn't accommodate everyone. It's the biggest venue that we can get. But we are posting sessions online every day so that developers can follow us remotely. I'd like to get started this morning with a few updates, beginning with Apple Retail. Of course, our retail there is now, of course, a very rigid formula to these announcements. They start with retail. They talk about mm -hmm. sales of products. Did that last year. Essentially, uh, a, a kind of a layman's annual report. Who work at our stores because they're passionate about how Apple. You know, maybe while we're doing this, we could check in quickly with Glenn Rubenstein in our skybox to tell us what's going on at the Xbox One reveal, Glenn. So they just showed us a game called Sunset Overdrive, which looks uh, like Evil Dead, very over the top, very bloody, very gross, but it's in daylight, which is kind of cool. Normally games like that, you had to limit to nighttime, foggy environments because you were dealing with uh, limited depth of field. This is full open world exploration. But right now they're showing Forza Motorsport 5. They just did sort of a highlight reel. What is that car on stage, a McLaren? Uh, yeah, McLaren. Wow. Yeah, so they're talking about vehicle design and what's going to be possible with the Xbox One system. It's really about hardware for Xbox One, and they're oh, going to be definitely. showing off the better hardware, I think. Definitely. Yeah. They need to show what the system can actually Thank do. Thank you, Glenn. Glenn Rubenstein, Jeff Needles, Needles will be keeping an eye on Microsoft. Let's go back to San Francisco and WWDC. This is hard, isn't it? Yeah. It's a lot <laughs> we got Jason Howell. It looks like a... I'm going to be sweating by the end of this show. <laughs> <An octopus>. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, it's, it, this is the sort of thing where it's like, WWDC is happening, so all other companies should hold off. Now they're just like, Yeah, no. it's kind of crazy. Is that the... Uh, that's the Paris... Uh, at the L'Opera, the uh, Apple Store in Paris, is it not? That's beautiful. They just remodeled that. We have a signature crowd. Uh, is Berlin, that what I that is? Oh, is that Berlin? Yeah. yeah. So it looks like the one at L'Opera. We made a video, and I'd like to run it for you this morning. Aww. Interesting background uh, for Tim. You don't usually see these big photo backgrounds. like that. Big flat. Yeah, Berlin. This was their big store for their, over the last year. In both Paris and Berlin, they're using uh, older buildings. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's kind they're of very nice. Yeah. I guess New York City, too, with Grand Central yeah, Station. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. And a very big open uh, plan for this. Well, it looks like a Microsoft store. <laughs> <laughs> More like a Samsung store. <laughs> oh, no, it's the other way. Well, now I have to go to Berlin. <laughs> oh, oh, shucks. Big lines uh, to get in on that opening day. Yeah, look at everyone. They're so happy. Guy's wearing a hero on his head. Was that Ryan Vance? I think it was. <laughs> Actually, Apple saves, holds the videos uh, till later. They've shown two videos already, just 15 minutes into the event. Yeah, I mean, it's all Pumping it's very up. happy, happy, joy, joy. Well, also yeah. very polished marketing, and uh -huh. I think. If you have speakers like Tim who are not super dynamic, mm. maybe this is a, a smart response from marketing. Well, let's dress it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I think they really are feeling the like we up. need to make sure people don't leave for Android. We don't fear they are, but we really want to fire them up. Well, that is one thing that has changed for Apple. They are, they are not head and shoulders ahead of everybody else. It's a fantastic else. store in a great location. Only Apple could do this. Now, we also have some pretty great digital stores, and I know this is incredibly important to those of you in the audience. The App Store celebrates its fifth birthday next month. Nothing like the App Store existed before, and it has fundamentally changed the world. Customers love the buying experience, and they love your incredible apps, and they've now downloaded 50 billion apps. This is phenomenal. That's a lot of zeros and a truly staggering number for less than five years. Thanks to you, we now have 900,000 apps in the store, and the catalog is very active. 90% of those are downloaded each month. We have 375,000 apps that have been designed for iPad to take advantage of the full, beautiful canvas that still compares to just a few hundred from those other guys. And we have 575 million accounts 
that. These are, most of these accounts have credit cards and one-click buying, so it's simple and elegant to buy your apps. We have more accounts with credit cards than any store on the internet that we're aware of. Hmm. Now, we are incredibly proud this morning to announce I, I don't want that we have now paid this. developers $10 billion. <laughs> You're that watching Apple's a big uh, round of applause from the developers. Yeah, it? well, they, you know, it sounded bigger than looking cash. at it. It didn't look like they were all kind of jumping up and down. Last year. Now to put You're watching live contact, coverage of the WWDC and Microsoft's Xbox One press conference at the E3 combined. on the Twit network. There's the competitive uh, information that uh, we were talking about, Tom. One of the things we love about the App Store is that it levels the playing field between large developers and small developers. You're going to see this shift from how many downloads there are, how many apps there are, to revenue, uh, because that's where Apple shines. They're really, Android's catching up in terms of the number of apps and the number of downloads. Ron Conway? Yeah, that's an odd. He's a board member, or was a board member. I'd like to introduce you to Anki. Anki is using the iOS platform to create an entirely new category of experiences. They're oh, no. launching their company for the first time on stage today. We're going right into a They're demo, using huh? IOS devices and they have and mixed the this up a little bit. Yeah. To bring artificial intelligence and robotics into our daily lives. I'd like to introduce Boris Softman, CEO and co-founder of Anki. This is, uh, this is also the about the international. They're really emphasizing form. international. Boris? You know, Berlin, uh, an international developer, I think. The fact that they're streaming it, they're focusing on developers and international. Yeah. I, I think they really are trying to say, look, we wish all of you could be here. Yeah. Carnegie Mellon University. We worked on right. everything well, from machine learning CMU. to walk-in robots to autonomous vehicles. With the, the name of, of the West company, devices, Anki, and the... Bringing these well, Pittsburgh's like another one. Yeah. ...intelligence technologies <laughs> out is. of the lab and into people's lives. And we're starting by reinventing the way people play. Today, He's carrying after a over tube. half a decade of working on Anki, we are so excited to give you a peek this at our really product, an interesting Anki Drive. Way to start. Uh, oh, my very goodness. Very different. What's happening? God, you know how Oh, you know, this so reminds nervous. me a little bit of the Google I.O. Slot racing. To me today is Brad Newman, our I think that's why they're doing it. At Anki. No. We can do slot racing now, uh, in real life. So he's unrolled a slot, hood. what looks like a As slot racing these cars go through a few track, formations, and he's put real cars on Each it. of them is completely driving themselves, and our app is coordinating the entire Autonomous experience over Bluetooth vehicles. low energy. Risky the going with the demo early. Speed and they steer around the track by doing the same computations your brain does when you drive. Oh. They sense where they're located. And Google's they got the autonomous All vehicles. In real time. We've got autonomous uh, this red miniatures. Car? Race cars. Race He's cars. our hero, Aiden. We designed him and all the other cars to be incredibly smart. 500 times per second, they're running logic to sense the track. All well, that autonomy doesn't it. make for a very Just fun game. Nobody ever crashes. Back and forth with our AI engine on that iPhone. Yeah, what are you, what are you as the Holiday user Aiden doing? <laughs> Just watching yeah. them never the, stop. Do I have to buy that big poster? Yeah, can you mod the car? I guess you can print different tracks. Quick restart. You have yep. a pretty big printer. One second. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yep, go ahead. Ooh. Yeah, this is why you don't begin with a demo. Demo fail. Oh, this is, look, they're getting all the cars off the track. This is not why you begin, this is exactly right, why go. you don't begin with a demo. Anki is under a red light now, as all the cars are in the pit. <laughs> there goes the yellow flag. And... Huh. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, back at Microsoft, <laughs> <laughs> Quantum Break. Yep, go for it. And they are uh, running real time in the game engine once again. All so, right. it's all about now. games at the Microsoft Minecraft Xbox One Edition. I yeah. think uh, OMG Chat will be happy about that. Bigger maps, more yep. multiplayer. And uh, it looks like it's a higher res. <laughs> that can't be, but it looks like it's no longer 8 bit. I don't know if Minecraft is necessarily the game you want to show off. <laughs> Well, it's a big game. It's, it's a, a big game. game. It's a big game. I'm All just saying right. visually, yeah. it, it does look better, but it yeah, looks it's, better. it's still Minecraft. I see. He wanted to show how you could add a car while the rest of them were moving. It's Which that didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> well, it did. They had to take now. all the cars off. Right. And start over. 
We are using iOS devices, not just as remote controls, but yeah. as the brain. This is the kind of thing you do at a developer conference, experience. for sure. And that is what lets us bring these cars to life. This is the kind of thing that you. Now let's do something you interesting. Place bets here. on the, uh, the different cars. He's going to tell these other cars to try to block Hayden. Well, you know, ah. you, you. So you're playing at a higher level. Uh, what we're okay. doing is defining a new objective for each car, and they figure out the rest. You asked the question if this was, you know, really just for developers. So this is maybe. I mean, this is, certainly is. The cars as he looks for an opening. Except now, it's kind of hypnotic to watch. To to <laughs> this is a very poor way to begin. <laughs> Luckily, Aiden is equipped to handle any situation. Weapons enabled. <laughs> <laughs> this is a video. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's pretty cool. They just shot him off. This is a video game in the real world. We can customize everything in software, from the characteristics of the vehicles to the weapons that they can use. We are taking all of the things we love about video games and programming them onto physical characters that you can actually touch. With Anki Drive, we use the technology to take gaming to a whole new level. And the real fun starts when you take control of these cars yourselves. With your iPhone or iPod Touch, you can play against your friends, or you can challenge, uh, take your chances against the AI. We are okay, that ended up being pretty impressive. On the floor really? Of your living room. I, I felt Keep like it. it, it I thought that was cool. Life. Apple stores and Apple it's a bad demo, this fall, And we just pushed the Anki Drive app today. So you can, so you can buy can this download now. Download it and get a deeper look. And We're how much? We're a robotics and artificial intelligence company, and what you see here is only the beginning. It's Thank kind of a, a brave move to do a game demo uh, while E3 is going on. <laughs> Who's going to have those little magic carpets, you know? So it's Autonomous Death Race 2013, somebody in the chat room said. Hmm. I think it stuff. suffers by comparison with being in an Apple example. keynote. It yeah. just it wasn't a very good explanation. Of the power of the combination of your incredible apps and the iOS devices in the ecosystem. I'd love to show you a lot more today, but we don't have time. But I'd like to thank... On behalf of Apple, I'd like to thank all of the developers Thanks here everyone for, coming. for making such incredible apps. See you next time. Thank you. Yeah, no. Go hit your sessions. It, it, it does feel like they've turned this upside down on its head. Now, I don't know what's next. That's all, folks. Next, I'd like to talk about the Mac. Okay. The Mac well, installed really now turned is this incredibly down. strong at 72 million. This is double what it was just five years ago. We announced the new the iMac at the end of last year, of and it went on to become the number one bad idea to shake in the things US. Up at this point. And the MacBook has continued to define no. the future of the notebook and is the number one notebook in the U.S. In fact, the Mac business has outpaced the PC business for several years now. And if you look at the last five years, the average annual growth rate So is this going to be new products or OS X? And if you look at the total growth over the Mac, said Max. Time, yeah. the Mac, I, I have to think this is where we see the 13-inch. Versus the PC. The new 13 -inch give me a retina air. Give me a retina air. And really, it's about getting past one of those things. Now, for us, it's never been about making the most. We care much more that the Mac is number one in customer sat and quality. Yeah, this is this is. And you don't just have to take my word for it. You couldn't All just say that is sat. Agree. He's a products guy. We had lots of innovation for the Mac last year, and one of those was announced here with Mountain Lion. Mountain Lion, of course, is our latest release of OS X. We've shipped 28 million copies since we announced it making it the best-selling release of all time. And what's even more impressive is that 35% of our users are using the latest yeah. version of using... The Engadget blog is a little bit line. ahead of us and is saying Craig, now, Craig Federighi is coming Windows up on stage. 8. Yeah, I saw that He's too. Kind of struggling to that would apply OS X, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. We're making the best Macs we've ever made, but we're not standing still. We've got lots of innovation left, and today we want to talk to you about what we're doing with OS X. Ah, to do right. that, I'd like to invite Craig Federighi up to the stage. Craig? OS X Grumpy Cat. Ryan Block stole my joke. OS X Liger. Liger. 
Oh, we've gone through he them stole all. that from somebody else. We've gone through those all. Yeah. <laughs> There's not a cat left that we haven't mentioned. I tried to say it every WWDC, <laughs> though. Our latest release, Mountain Lion, is the ninth of our big cat named releases. Actually, nice to see Craig on stage. Just over a decade. As we turn our attention now Aringaya. toward the tenth, open. We've hit a real issue. Collar, uh, royal blue <laughs> shirt. We do not want to be the first software in history to be delayed due to a dwindling supply of cats. <laughs> awesome. Very nice. Now, fortunately, that jokes always we do go over well. creative group at Apple, and we can think out of the box. And so we thought, maybe we could take this lion thing in a different direction. Uh-oh. So I'm uh -oh. proud to present to you today, with sea lion. OS X oh Sea Lion. Oh, no. No, no, no. that's what a joke. Okay. That's a joke. Thank goodness. That would be awesome, though. It's kind of cute. Sea Lion. Seal. Oh, that could be a bit of a dead end. So, in fact, we're really excited about the future of the Mac, and we want to. I want to see more Craig. I think Craig's good. The next this is, ten years. This is good. And you know, the answer really was really obvious to us. It's those places that inspire us here in California, hmm. in the place hmm. where OS X is designed and built. Stealing from the Intel. Yeah. Wait, as somebody from California, I applaud, but I wonder how people outside of California so feel about this. Yeah, well, I don't not, care about not the way we feel. We went just All those Oregon places. Backyard, just off the coast to a place with some of the biggest waves and most extreme Maverick? surfing in all of North America. OS 10 Maverick? OS 10 Maverick. It is. Really? Oh. Are you what? serious? They're naming right it after now? beaches. They've, they've gone well, they're naming from it after the, what, surf, the surf? largest. Break point in the world. Yeah, I grew up now, there. Mavericks is a release with deep just off Santa Cruz. focused on extending battery oh, life okay. and providing dangerous responsiveness. Place. Yeah, they should bundle it in a free copy of Point Break. Yeah. Enhancements for every Mac user and some features that we think are going to really OS 10 Mavericks. To power users. Mavericks. And I want to talk about just three Plural. of them right now, starting with From Finder cats tabs. To waves. Finder tabs. Ah, oh, that's interesting. So we are seeing a big shift now oh in OS gosh. 10. Sounds like you guys know how this is going to work. So, you of course can work in the Finder with multiple windows. It's a very powerful tool. But now you can draw all those windows together in tabs. And nice. each tab can have its own location, its idea. own view mode. It's really powerful too. You can actually drag contents and hover across tabs. And of course, now that we have tabs in the Finder, it's also a great app. Something to Pathfinder take full uh, did many years ago. Next, but still nice. Tagging. Yes. <laughs> One guy got it. That guy. <laughs> We're bringing tagging to the Mac. So now, when you save a document, in addition to providing its location and name, you can tag it. And when you do, it'll appear right in the Finder sidebar. Oh, that's great. In fact, you can tag things wherever they are, whether they're in an Apple uh, or on a local It labels, share. remember. Oh. Yeah. And uh, they mm -hmm. were widely ignored by everybody. In Finder. I'm not and sure how this differs. Well, I think it's just really people know what tags are. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It makes more sense. We'll see. Next. We'll see if it gets used. Yeah. Next, multiple displays. Really? Now, I'm not sure why the crowd's going crazy on this. What, what have they done differently? The Mac, of course, we're not giving you all the free multiple display here. This is a, a software. So, uh, with multiple displays <laughs> on the Mac, it's always been a powerful way to spread out your work. But now, in Mavericks, you can get at your menus across multiple displays. You can summon your dock across multiple displays. And when you take a window full screen on one display, it doesn't mess with your desktop on the other display. All right. That's, these are all small but very nice tweaks. And I really love this. When you pan your spaces, you can do it independently on each of your displays. Ah. That is nice. Mm -hmm. But it is a fairly limited audience. Developers love it, and there are people who have multiple displays, but I don't know if that's a, how widespread that is. No. It acts as a full power separate display as well. And I'd like to show all of this to you now. Now, he's very good. He's the new star, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Take our first look here nice hair. At Mavericks. <laughs> and we're going to start to ad -lib. with the yep. Finder. Funny. So. Here's Finder environment. I got a lot going on. Kind of a new a style of windows, with a, uh, a lot of different locations. I'm going to go up here to the window menu. Color, and let's merge uh, Royal all blue my is this color we've not seen at Apple Keynotes. Untucked. Just like that, they hop yeah, into untucked. a set of tabs. Now, of course, these tabs have different locations. 
different view settings These for each of those locations. All relatively minor Pretty and not too upsetting, certainly not uh, the iOSification like of um, like OS X that was maybe another big problem for this in Lion and Mountain Lion. Work but file share things I think people will right here. Mm -hmm. value and now use, that I have multiple yeah. uh, tabs, it's a really great way to actually work and copy documents. So if I want to copy this field report, I can just hover over They're the not headline tab, grabbing features, though. No. Drop it. When you like lead that, with tabs, really nice. you're kind of... And, mm -hmm. of talking course, about utility more I can now take Finder Dazzle. full screen. Next, let's take a look at tagging. This is really cool. So as I go to save a document, you notice I can give it a name. Like, let's yeah, say I'm not sure how plans. this is so in different to its from location, labels, in this case, I'm gonna save no it one iCloud. used as far as I, I know. I can also give it a tag. It's called tag. I think that really is yeah. Yeah. made up. So I'm going to call this document... I, there's an unlimited number, too. Of course, there were only a, and we'll go here like eight labels or something like that. Into the Finder, and you see in the Finder sidebar, I have an important tag, and I see all these documents. They're from different locations, different applications, all drawn together in the sidebar. We have other tags I've given things for things that are draft. I think this is review. a good idea. I mean, now, the world understands tag, tags now. I can assign multiple tags to the same document. That's part of the power of tags. So I go here. And I'm going to say this one is also in review. And you notice and as maps I sign icon that tag, in the dock it now appears in that location as well. And if I want to assign carefully at the dock. a totally new tag, I want to make up a tag on the fly, I can just type it right here. There's a website project I'm working on. It says create new tag website. And just like that, I've created a new tag. And you can see it right here in the finder. And it's like a smart folder, as uh, give that tag a Curtis color, B of points out in our chat room. And now mm -hmm. that I have that tag, I can also assign tags by just dragging things in to the tag area in the Who finder. Who uses that so fan display in the uh, for my website? Oh, that thing is just drag them in. I hate it. Like that. First thing I change. And tags are great for searching. So yeah, I, I think this is good. This is a, a simple addition. Can find all documents that are <laughs> frankly important. catching uh, files, the desktop up with the web. Both important, but it's useful. I mean, that are in review. That's essentially what a tag is: is a saved just search. Just like that, I mm -hmm. found exactly what I'm looking for with tags. <laughs> Microsoft tried this with libraries, and I think tags are perhaps more intuitive. Next, let's take a look at multiple displays. I'm going to open up some of the kind of windows that I'm often working with. We'll open up iPhoto here, maybe a, uh, a keynote presentation. And Debbie in our chat room says this looks like it's a finished this, or almost uh, released Pro. product, uh, and it's true. It, there on the it looks pretty now. polished. Of course, with multiple displays, I can just move windows. I don't know how much I'm willing to expect. Pay but for an upgrade that gives me get these three features as its top display. features. Though. If I go down to the bottom, I can summon the dock just like that. If I want to open an app on the second display, I'd pay just, just to run OS X called Mavericks. Here's uh, iTunes. <laughs> Take this app. It's really screen. interesting. They're going to beaches. Just like I, that. I, I'm swipe space. floored by that. Yeah, well, they ran out of cats. Well, and Mavericks with an S. Like, the whole thing yeah. is just, it's strange. Yeah. They ran out of cats. You have, surfer, you have to be an great. expert to surf my, uh, Mavericks. That's yeah. right. It's not friendly. How oh, John McCain feels nice about it. Full screen apps <laughs> on my different displays. It's actually a really fantastic way to work. <laughs> Going and iOS 7 is called Palin. Quick note that at the Xbox of one announcement like they've just mentioned that cool. twitch.tv will be integrated control, into xbox live which is a very interesting display. move so I'm gonna go online gameplay uh, live online streaming gameplay inside of xbox spaces, live big and, news for uh, justin tv the owners of twitch.tv huge I can drag a window from one display to another but I can also they're getting rid of microsoft points as well thank god right and the 100 friend limit on xbox open, live is gone so we'll keep you up to date on what's going on with xbox i know you're interested in both Finally, I actually have an Apple TV uh, around here. Let's bring that into play. So here's my here's my Apple TV. Now ah. uh, this is this is pretty over the top. So I can actually go here into uh, AirPlay. I'm going to connect to this Apple TV. So now Does this become a third monitor. A oh yeah. my God, that's well. pretty cool. I don't know how practical bar. that really is, oh, but it's pretty awesome. No, I would use this. You're yeah. watching the I, keynote I on your I TV, would. and you're still yeah. using your Mac doing and other things. Yeah. No, I would use this. I totally because you could full screen now, and it yeah. won't affect the other screen. This has a, been a problem with that uh, AirPlay yeah. is that it takes over. Your laptop is no longer usable. Oh, that's great. Wow. That's talk about an interesting application for second screen. I think we may be a niche here, but I'm yeah, we are a niche. You gotta have an Apple TV, obviously, to do this. But I think that's a great feature. I put AirPlay from Next, my MacBook Pro all the I'd time. I'd like to talk about some advanced technologies in Mavericks. I like you that. Know, I will. I will do that. Our power users are increasingly doing their work on the go. They want great responsiveness, but they also want great battery life. 
And in it also means that you could buy a third screen that is a, a big screen mm -hmm. for an executive. To address that challenge. Somebody have a dashboard like running. memory that makes sure you have memory available very quickly when apps demand it. Technologies like AppNap that Time actually make sure we're directing power only to those oh, applications where you're really benefiting from it. System-wide core animation, accelerated scrolling, and OpenGL 4 for super responsive graphics. This actually is all very and important. Topic I want to go into particularly on Retina displays now. and timer coalescing. This improves battery life. So you know when you important. look at battery life on your computer, the real factor that software has this the most influence Apple pioneered. over Intel's is now put into Haswell and, its and Microsoft has put into Windows 8. And if you look but at what your system Apple is really doing pioneered. at any given uh, time. What you'll see as you look under the hood is not a smooth line, yeah. but actually this is what kills hundreds battery of interrupts life occurring per second on where the laptops. system is going from a power They're essentially stay, state staying awake all the time to do of, uh, various things. Use and power nap down. Is and all of those transitions actually consume a lot of power. Apple's well, in Mavericks, we intelligently align all of that work, yeah. reducing those number of transitions. Windows 8 does this, this as well. In combination with technologies like AppNap and other power optimizations, AppNap. reduce CPU utilization activity for these kinds of scenarios up to 72%. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, this is this is <laughs> important technology, but it is yeah. everywhere. Now. Apple does this a lot, where they take a technology yeah. that's pervasive and make Next, it seem like. Well, they, I think they pioneered it. I think you can give them credit. Power Nap was the first sure. I'd seen of it. Performance of your Mac, the responsiveness more of a Mac that's under load sure this is and its ability to provide free memory to an app. Now, typically, when you look at your app runtime, all your memory is inactive. In fact, a subset of your memory is actively being used, and others is memory we have to keep around but isn't being used by the app. Well, now, if you open a document, your system is going to need to get free memory, and it does that in the past by writing those inactive bits of memory out to disk, and that's a slow process. Now, with compressed memory, we're able to rapidly compress the inactive memory, making free space available almost instantaneously to the application. This can have great effects on responsiveness of systems. This is something load. of interest, obviously, to developers, kinds of unless so. Even on fast SSD users. systems for activities. <laughs> no more like Microsoft new points, by the way. They just mentioned. An yeah, yeah, we mentioned that. And up to one. Uh, I, I think that. Uh, for waking a system from standby. This is probably less of an important of technology in the days of massive memory, which we in Mavericks. live in. Next, let's talk about Safari. Let's. In let's the last do. decade of life, Safari has focused not just on providing the easiest to use and most elegant browsing experience, but also the most innovative. These are the kinds of innovations that Safari has brought. Private browsing, blocking of third-party cookies for privacy, making the web easier to read with features like reading list and the HTML5 audio and video tag, all Safari firsts. And the engine in Safari, WebKit, is used by over 1.5 billion devices. Well, in Mountain Lion, Including we're making Safari Android. even better. We have a great, clean new home page with top 1 sites. 1.5 billion right From now on Chrome still has. Yeah. Great sidebar. The blink will, will change that. We have access to all of your bookmarks, and you can browse right from your bookmarks. And in that sidebar, we also have reading list, where now you can continuously scroll through your articles, moving from article to article without ever having to click. And a great new feature called shared links, where you see all of the links shared by people you're following on Twitter and LinkedIn. You can browse hmm. them right here. Weird. Now, in no Facebook. To these and user improvements, there's also a lot going on under the it's hood. Kind of neat. Big improvements to JavaScript. A full process per tab architecture and memory efficient. The process per tab is something that was uh, pioneered in Chrome cache. and is really a and valuable a whole security bunch feature. Of big power Definitely. savings as well. When you look at the effects of these changes, it's pretty profound. Let's you take a synthetic benchmark like SunSpider, you see how Safari fares against Safari's the always done well with SunSpider. But you know, researchers have started to look at more real world JavaScript. Yeah, where's IE like on that? Sampling uh, the JavaScript that actually occurs on sites like the Google homepage. Facebook, Amazon.com. And when you look at Safari's performance on a benchmark like that, JS Bench, the results Again, are really Again, no incredible. Internet Explorer. Odd. That is odd. And this is Chrome under WebKit. Yeah. Safari is also awesome when it comes now. Oh, I guess because IE doesn't work on OS X, nobody way cares. Less memory than the other browsers. <laughs> That's right. More memory for you to browse. Already, uh, more on your system. the Photoshops have begun. OS X Mavericks now featuring Tom Cruise and <laughs> saying, I feel the need for speed. 
than Chrome. And when you compare Can't to Firefox, reuse. it's just kind of sad. Whoa. So that's Safari. I'd love to give you a demo of some of our advanced right. technologies in Safari right now. So let's let's check in while we're looking at Safari because I think this would probably have a less go interest uh, into, to uh, uh, our folks uh, and so here up on the Skybox. Glenn Rubenstein and Jeff Needles, Needles are recovering the uh, Microsoft and announcement just want to show you how, E3. Uh, What's new at E3? Well, uh, we talked about, the, I think the main highlight before this game DVR feature with Twitch integration is fantastic. Of course, no more MS points, with, which we've touched on. What's the on. game DVR? So you can record your gameplay and then upload to Twitch? You can yeah. instantly broadcast it to Twitch through Connect. You can essentially say, Xbox, start broadcasting, and your gameplay will go out on Twitch TV. Big, 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 big thing for Justin. I mean, the owners of Twitch.tv are be thrilled. Definitely. And it'll also include your video and uh, voice, audio That's annotations great. while you're playing the games, which is definitely cool. Since then, they've also shown Crimson Dragon, a new Kinect game from the creator of Panzer Dragoon. Looks cool. Uh, you get to shoot from your dragon. Yeah, definitely. Definitely interesting. And now they're showing Dead Rising 3, and they're bragging about there's going to be no load times, which is something that's definitely plagued earlier Dead Rising games. And you're also going to be able to create and craft weapons from your environment. So uh, this definitely, as far as uh, post-zombie apocalypse games, looks like uh, the king. epic in scale. The king of post-zombie apocalypse yes. games. Dead Rising yeah, if you're not 3. sick of that yet, Dead Rising 3 <laughs> has something for you. Thank you, Glenn Rubenstein. Let's go back to uh, Moscone West, the WWDC. Craig Federighi demonstrating new features of Mac OS X like Mavericks. Off in the corner, you've covered this window up, and yet it's still draining your battery life. You don't even realize it. Well, now with this technology we call AppNav, we keep track of what's going on and what things you actually see to decide where to direct power. Somebody so said this looks like when I bring the up opens of Breaking, Breaking Bad. Bad. <laughs> yeah. It really does. The Safari window. Are they making meth in that window? Power drops right down. The new Apple campus has been bug That's bombed. extending your battery life. <laughs> but of course, that thing is still running. It's still available to me, so if I pull it aside, you know, there it goes. You can the see emphasis on battery life, right Sarah, maybe indicates up, uh, that you uh, are right, right, that there might be down. a retina it's error. It's really going to mm -hmm. help your battery life is, is absolutely critical. Apple's got pretty good battery life, but Haswell's going to increase it Next, 50%. Sure. If this gets another 25%, you almost double the battery uh -huh. life. Might be worth really it. Really clean, really nice. Might we'll give you a retina display you see, I have and some improvement. Well, or, or certainly a retina display that doesn't kill you. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't yeah. knock battery yeah. life off. Side over from my bookmarks into top sites. I can just drag it out like this. It's really nice. I can open it up. Animates in from the sidebar. You're watching live coverage access, of Apple's Worldwide uh, Developer Conference links. keynote. I mean, who's the surfer of the group here? We can't Twitter stop talking wow. about it. Well, I think beaches, right, are going to be the new uh, genre uh, instead okay. of big cats. You've got Bondi. You've got... And we now have one click book. I don't know. What's another fam famous beach? I don't know. Well, I mean, if we're talking about surf, surf breaks, like Jaws, the, uh, the that's on Maui. Yeah. You think it's places in Cal? Strange Graf in our chat room, or sorry, Strange Seraph in our chat room says, no, it's not beaches, it's California. California places. So they can do Yosemite, Joshua Tree. Yeah, it's not so bad. Yeah. Not so bad. They've always said, you know, design in California made in China on the iPod. Tahoe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We also have a beautiful new look. For readers, I'm waiting for OS 10 Petaluma. I think that would be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> David Bix says OS 10 Cow Palace. That'll be fun. Oh, that'll be really OS nice. OS 10 Eggs yeah. and Butter. <laughs> butter and Eggs Day. Yeah. One article to the next. Big Sur. Like Compton. OS 10 yeah. Landfill on 101. That's Compton. <laughs> yes. <laughs> straight out of Compton. OS 10 straight out of Compton. <laughs> so we have some more improvements that I think are going to really help you with your browsing, and one of them is iCloud Keychain. Hmm. Yeah. All right, this is, uh, of course, you know, interesting security issues secure here. These days, you want to have a co different, complex password for every site where you have a login. This, this is an this issue that Apple kind of could have done better on. Keychain is local only to your machine. You make it in the cloud, it's only your uh, one password, last pass competitor. Yeah. They don't seem to do well when they take on cloud services like no. that. Networks, and there will be some work widely enough. They're always encrypted. It, it, of course, will be Apple only. But systems, so and there's always, always the issue of now, uh, when you go sign Apple's up for a security. You can, of course, enter your this own is nice, password. though. I, you know, most Remember users will use well, this. And really, the point of this is people who are not sophisticated enough to run one password or LastPass will at least have an option in the OS 
and then to do something more secure than post-it notes. For you from but on. if they have an Android phone, it ain't going to work. Right. I've often wondered why they didn't extend Keychain in this way. Yeah. iCloud Keychain is great for your shopping as well. When you come to a credit card field, you can suggest any of your... Oh, yeah, it's totally a last pass. Yeah. Select know. one. And it'll just and it probably it requires like Safari, I'm going to guess. Uh, Safari only. You have to remember your own Not only Apple only, but Safari only. Secure after all. <laughs> and that's iCloud Keychain. Yeah. Notifications. This is interesting. Look at that. Next, this is a this is a mobile move to desktop. Well, so anything's now, better. Notifications on the Mac. If you're a, a Californian like me, you'll I'm often get really tired of this pop, pop up notifications. Hate them. Want to go surf these 30 foot waves? And your response surely is <laughs> all of us Californians get those kind of notifications. We are surfing. Yeah. Hey, you want to hit Mavericks? Yeah, sure, I'm going to surf that 30. Sure, foot sir. Wave. It's true. Sure. They can't stop Those talking about it. They cannot stop talking about surfing. You know, it's clear marketing, it's did, marketing did a lot of research yeah. Yeah. and said, uh, no, people like California. They don't hate it anymore. <laughs> California is, a, is cool again. It's cool again. And uh, let's, let's focus on it. A new kind of notification. So if you have an app today that sends push notifications to iOS devices, well, now you can sign up to receive those push notifications. Ah, this on is Google. something Chrome, well. Google did with Chrome. Love this. Is or is doing, in the process of doing with Chrome, and uh, Apple jumped, just leapfrogged them. So That's great. Like your fantasy football <laughs> Probably have to have an iPhone Maybe for this. breaking news. <laughs> news about that buy on eBay. The laughter. Surfboard. Yeah, and the laughter was the GIF, drink. the GIF founder saying it's pronounced GIF. There was a little laughter. When you wake it up, that's one of the news they'll tell breaking you news. Yeah, you missed while you're away, right on the lock the laugh screen. Sign went on. And it'll now update apps for you right in the background, so you don't have to do it yourself. Oh, wow. hallelujah! I'm so sick Love of those that. cascading apps. Oh yeah. So that's notifications. Next up, calendar. Let's take a look. What are they cheering for? Absolutely Calendars. No well. virtual cows were harmed in the making of this user interface. Mm -hmm. We're going to be adding that one to our environmental checklist, trust us. So in addition to that, you have your Facebook uh, events right on your calendar, if you wish. And we have a great new inspector that's even aware of things like location, travel time, and weather. And that's your calendar. All right, well. Nifty. It's, yeah. The design is probably indicative next, of iOS 7. Now. Yeah. I, I gotta say, I, I think that looked kinda messy. Mm. The Maps team has been making great improvements to the data in Maps, and Mac users are gonna benefit because we have this fantastic new Maps app. Of course, with your street maps, you have your 3D, beautiful flyover data, search for points of interest, great info cards. You can get turn-by-turn -turn directions. And my favorite part, Accuracy. when I have a route that I've set up on my Mac, and now it's time to go, you can just click right up here and send it right to my iPhone. Oh, It'll great. Right on my lock screen. I love the... Uh... And when I the interoperability phone, takes me straight into navigation. Super cool. We're also providing a developer SDK so you can add mapping functionality to your apps as well. <laughs> so that's maps. Finally, we're bringing iBooks to the Mac. <laughs> so now you have access to the full library of 1.8 million I books. books in the iBook store. Your full library from your iOS devices is available on it's your kind of hard to believe this well. hasn't been on the desktop. It's a great mm -hmm. environment I, Considering how many students would take advantage notes. of this. Yeah. Well, and yeah, Kindle's there's been, been on the desktop, so exactly. iBooks, and on the web. Books, yeah. They're beautiful, and they're interactive. I'd love to give you a demo of all of this right now. To some degree, uh, a lot of this feels like uh, refinement and some catch-up. Mm -hmm. But mostly refinement. So let's start. You now send maps from maps. your Mac to yeah. your iOS device. Something you could do with uh, uh, Chrome and, mm -hmm. and Mountain Lion felt uh, more refinement right in, you see it's just so fast as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yes. Well, that was the original idea of TikTok. You know, leopard, yeah. snow leopard. 
Less Snow Leopard would be a refinement on Leopard. Big Jump to Lion, Lion Mountain Lion refinement. Look at that flyover data. Uh, Maverick Overall. should have been the tick, right? It should have been right. a big change. But I think now in OSs, it's hard to make a big change. Tilted over. Um, I, I'm much more comfortable with refinements, frankly, improvements, than some massive change in how it looks. And well, and some of the massive changes in Lion, nobody, I don't think anybody liked. Right. 3D maps, again, this is, you know, uh, a take on uh, Google Maps. That sure looks nice. As it the Eiffel Tower the always looks nice. Yeah. yeah. Have you noticed? Just like yeah, that? it's just a neat data. thing, isn't it? It's just neat. Really yeah, big quite a structure. Display. Of course, we support great search for points of interest. So if I want to go to lunch, maybe at, I'm told this is Guy Savoy. We'll go to Guy <laughs> 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 Three Michelin star uh, He is like told correct. It <laughs> is a wonderful <laughs> place that we happen to <laughs> like very much. Very much. Very, very good. Escargo. <laughs> Guy Savoy. Like <laughs> and... I'm sure Loic is thrilled. Devices, so this location is available to me, of course, on my phone. And because this is a Mac, I can tear these off. So if I'm planning a trip, I can set aside some things of interest. I can, of course, get directions. Let's do that here. Directions from the Eiffel Tower. And when I'm ready to go... Gisevois. It's very interesting that you would choose right Gisevois. Yeah. Like this. And he He's didn't choose to... it, obviously, and since he... Max. Yeah. Okay. Yes. He had to be told out of France. He's trying to identify with the little man. The little man, the three-star, Michelin three-star little let's man. Let's take a look at the new calendar. It has continuous scrolling, and what's really amazing... Uh, see, again, I'm, uh, something that it should have been doing from day one, but thank God they finally added it. Mm -hmm. right there on the screen. It doesn't fall off without... It looks the just system. like a Google calendar, doesn't it? Oh. Uh, we did it. Oh, my. It's engineering. Uh, I do it's like really Greg. Great for Relaxed, great it's funny. Yeah, so he's hysterical. If I go and create an event like this, let's say I'm going to have lunch... And We've been wondering in, who's uh, the new star in so on stage star. Phil Schiller's not exactly exciting. Tim Cook's very uh, so serious. Pizza. Nice to have somebody like this. And you notice I get a map. I even get projected weather for that location, so I know if I need to uh, bring a jacket. Now I can select here and actually ask it to tell me what the travel time ah, is for great. my mm. last location. Very nice. So I can decide if I want to drive or walk. I'm going to say I want to walk. And it actually adds the travel time right to my calendar. So I know not to schedule anything there. That's no, very that's nice. That's great. Okay. That's, that's very nice. They're saying, we don't need Google now. We're going to do this kind of I stuff for you. I to remember because I can ask to be notified when I need to leave. And I'll get a notification uh, on both my Mac and on my Finally, phone. just some human-scale well. engineering in so these that things. Is maps. Mm -hmm. Finally, let's take a look at iBooks. So I have all my books here. Can he, browse he's my kind of jumping around. I thought arranged. we just took a look at iBooks and Get calendar. Access but. to the store with all of its I think content. he's doing the normal introduce and yeah, then yeah. do a fuller demo. What, what it's I'm going to say. It's moving so fast. Get in yeah. here and read. Move easily between the pages. You have access to all the controls you'd expect. Waves. Yeah. Your bookmark search. Can adjust your type of font and type size. Go into a nice night mode that's relaxing for the eyes. But of course, I really love these interactive iBooks textbooks. Let's open one of those up now. This is a, an area that I really thought Apple was going to do very well, and I was very impressed by these. Alex Lindsay and I talked on and on about the potential here, and it just never took off. And it's this happens a lot. Uh, Apple will introduce an incredibly innovative technology, and it just doesn't get picked up. And I don't. I'm not sure why. So if I want to understand... These are massive. They tend to be a gig to two gigs for these books. Yeah. Uh, and since you want to put them on an iPad, that is a little bit of a disadvantage. But look what you can do. It's incredible. Really great way to learn. Bob McBob says it's the textbook publisher's fault. It might be. They certainly have a, a lock, a monopoly, especially since you have to get by the individual state school boards before you can get into a school. Add a note. Ask the teacher... But every time I play with one of these, I'm just... This kind of feature is... Just fabulous. So much better like than a print that. book. Because it's a Mac, of course, I can just stretch out, get a sidebar where I can see all my notes. I mean, notes great for sidebar, education. Really I'm not going to be reading books on my laptop otherwise. Right. It's great for education, but what I don't see is a, 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 a lot of authors jumping to this format. Mm -hmm. And that's what needs to happen, of course. Study cards. You can just flip through them. Use all your notes. <laughs> study. Just like that. And that is iBooks in Mavericks. So Mavericks continues making your 
digital life developer preview available today for my device to device. So now your books are available on whatever device you choose to read them on. Remembers what page you're reading. We now remember your passwords, so they're available to you across all your devices, even now your bookmark location and travel routes. Mavericks is a fantastic release. It's full of some great features for power users, deep technology to extend your battery life and improve system responsiveness, and some great features for everyone. Oh, MacBook Air with Phil Schiller. For those Schiller. Of you we have a preview available for you today. Call it, sir. Well, she's watching. The our stream is a couple. <laughs> no, I mean, before, before few we seconds started. behind. You she did call it. Like you'll yeah. be getting the final release this fall. So that is Mavericks. this fall final release Next for OS 10 Mavericks 10.8.9. Did I get that right? 10.9. You're watching live coverage of Apple's WWDC keynote speech along with our Xbox. Uh, coverage from E3 brought to you by our friends at Slingbox. Phil Schiller to talk about the MacBook, Air. Air. The MacBook Air. Let's watch. The MacBook Air answered the question, in this age of the iPad, what is the future of the notebook? The MacBook Air really gave us a direction of where the notebook can go. And it's really become everyone's Phil's ultimate Phil's got some wings on his notebook. head. And that's why we're really pleased to Either, tell you today that we've updated know. an entire new line. Throw it out or cut it off, I of MacBook Air. Yeah. And these right, new MacBook Airs the deliver the, the most important feature we always want in a portable device. Damn, has great hair. I need great hair. All day battery. All day battery life. There we go. Now this will be yeah. interesting. This is what we want to see. Refreshing the Apple Store now. And the MacBook Air <laughs> is based on a new fourth generation okay. Intel That's Core Haswell. processor, otherwise known as Haswell ULT. And if you don't know Haswell ULT, ULT is the great processor for very big power, power savings. savings. Oh, oh no. The stream seems to have frozen. More energy efficient CPUs. There's twice the graphics execution units. So we can run them actually at a slower clock speed to save energy and still deliver up to 40% faster graphics performance. And the Apple engineers have worked together with the Intel en engineers on some great low power state. So we can do things like wake up in one second. Yeah, power and nap is supported in effect in hardware. 30 days. But the biggest benefit is battery life. So here's the current Wow, significant in improvements in battery life. Watch this. 13 inch. The 11 inch is now going to go from five hours of battery life up to an incredible nine Huge. hours of battery wow. life. Huge. And Apple wow. is usually fairly accurate with their battery. Yeah, they don't, they don't like most inflate. Manufacturers. Yeah. If you like that, the 13 Holy cow, 12, 12 hours, hours of battery for 13 life. inch. Yes. Wow. Again, True. credit card All out, ready life. to buy. And it helps across your entire system. <laughs> he says this fall, I'm going to kill him. like watching movies from iTunes. Up to 10 hours, you can watch almost the entire trilogy of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Wow. Of course, Good Apple example. Space entirely on Flash. Flash is faster, up to 45% faster than the previous version. And Wi-Fi is flat faster, too. Now, 802.11 AC. They're adding AC. Networking. Mm -hmm. Now, AC gets you up to three times the performance of 802.11 N at the same distance. But the way to get that, of course, is if you want your MacBook Air to talk to a Wi-Fi base station that supports 802.11 AC. Uh, so we're really happy to, along with... MacBook Air announced some new airport base stations. Oh, that's very different looking. Entirely new designs. Looks like They're a actually a very small base, just four bell. inches square, but of course I just bought one. six and a half inches to get wider range from those antennas. So there's a new airport extreme that does 802.11 AC. There's also room in there for a hard drive. Oh, wow. A time They're going to build well. in the uh, hard drive. And these are drive. great base stations. They're Two or three terabytes. Powerful. They have a lot of cool features. I'll just point out one, beam forming. They're going to do beam forming. Sounds cool. This is, I think, the first AC to access point AC to use beamforming. One of the most interesting features of AC. It aims, in effect, MacBook at Air your device. Comes in 11 inch and 13 inch sizes, and the value is even greater than before. The 11 inch starts at 999 with 128 gigabytes. That's twice the storage at the same price as before. And the 13 inch with 128 gigs starts at 1099. Like Retina. That's $100 no, less doesn't. expensive than before. They wouldn't be yeah. able to get that kind of battery life. Shipping yeah. today. Shipping today. now. Again, refreshing the store. However, I want to see what the MacBook Pros do. Mm -hmm. As we have for a while now, we're really proud that we lead the industry in the most environmentally friendly products. 
So we're going to make sure everyone knows how important this is to have Energy Star 5.2, most products don't. EP Gold, most don't. Arsenic free display. Didn't glass, mention RAM, which free, makes me think displays, it's still four gigabytes. BFR free, PVC free, Mac Pros are up next. Recyclable. We lead at this and we're going to continue to. No, so that's Mac the new MacBook Book Air. Pro. They're faster graphics, longer battery life, better value, faster Wi Fi, incredible notebooks. I'm going to do something different. We don't usually do this, but you're a really important audience. So huh. this is the pro. I'd like to give you a sneak yeah. peek of something we're working on. Yeah. Would you like that? Working on, but not available. That's, this, this is the one rumored to be assembled, Only because manufactured, 6, or my just most assembled. important yeah, in friend. Texas. Yeah. Mac Pro. And they're keeping the name. And you can bet developers are excited, as are video, video editors, editors, photographers, musicians, musicians. photographers. Yeah. Graphic designers count on Apparently products I'm like Mac Pro to, to get their work now. done. And our most advanced users just want to get their hands on the fastest, most expandable Mac we make. And the Mac Pro is really important to delivering on that. We didn't want to just make another version of the same old desktop idea that everyone's had. Like with MacBook Air, our engineering team has spent quite a bit of time thinking about the technology available today and what could be possible for the future of a pro desktop. What would be a new form factor, new design, new capabilities me. for another we 10 We now have years. a ship date on Xbox One. It is the November, team has November come up with for Xbox One. For $499 in the US. We nailed the radical. price. And this product is so cool. Well, I'm gonna go a little over the top and give it a grand introduction that is unlike any introduction we've ever had for a product. What? What? So I am really pleased Come in on a fireball? to give you, our closest friends, the first glimpse of the next generation I think of Daft Mac Punk Pro. has to play. What? Play them What's on. What's happening? It's in his pocket. <laughs> it's in his jeans pocket. What is happening? It's the, world, it's the small, it's, the room is darkening. And now the sun is setting. Oh, is that an eclipse? And now... We're seeing outlines of something Very amazing. Shiny. Oh, whoa. It's round, or is it cylindrical? They're definitely dumping the cheese grater. Piano black finish. It's a wow. pepper grinder. What the hell is this? What is this? Wow. Okay, 2001 what Space Odyssey. At? That's what that was. Um, oh. Okay, interesting. Oh my God. Oh. Oh. Wow. I want it. Uh, you know, wow. I don't know. Okay. It's, it's black plastic is what it is. Can't innovate anymore, my ass. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Phil Schiller. Oh, yeah. Boom. Wow. Boom. <laughs> Can't innovate anymore, my ass. He this said. is this is a good keynote. Well, it's a feisty yeah. apple, which I like. I like yeah. seeing him a little feisty. Steve Wozniak in the audience, sitting next to Janet, his wife. Steve's not applauding. Janet he he is. looks like he just doesn't know what's happening. Yeah. What's happening? He's wondering where this his stock machine, options went. Unlike Where's anything the we've ever made, both inside and out. The processor, graphics, memory storage are all built around a new unified thermal core. It even sounds cool. Yeah, so they have metal in the middle. Inside is state-of-the-art technology, a new generation Intel Xeon chip. use the Haswell Xeon. Up to 12-core configs, 256-bit wide floating point, PCI Express Gen 3. That's good, this PCI Express 3. This is the CPU performance of the previous generation. Yeah, this is needed. The fastest memory we've ever put in a product. ECC memory, DDR3 at 1866. Megahertz DDR3 they need on a four-channel controller. Thunderbolt, obviously. Per second bandwidth. That's double the performance of the And let's see what the GPU is. Internal storage is based on flash. Not any old flash. Yeah. New you should really PCIe say SSD. Flash. PCIe is very good, especially at three gigabytes per second writes. Yeah, that's fabulous. That's two and a half, half times faster than any flash we've ever built. It's 10 times faster than any hard drive we've put in a Mac Pro before. Yeah. 
All expansion is external. You can add external, external expansion. That's what we thought. Expansion chassis. We're going to use the Thunderbolt. Over the brand bus. new announced Thunderbolt 2. This is light it's 20 peak. 20 gigabit per second. Yeah. Up to six Thunderbolt 2 devices per port. It's backwards compatible with Thunderbolt 1 and Firewire, and it's double the performance of the industry standard. This is pretty much what we wanted. Thunderbolt 1. But the place where the team has probably gone the most crazy and done something we've never done before is in graphics. This is Here the first GPU. Mac ever that comes standard with dual workstation dual GPUs. GPUs. Dual Fire AMD Pros. AMD Fire Pro graphics in it. You can configure it up to 4,096 stream processors, 528 gigabytes per second. Yeah, this, this is, is going to be a very pricey machine. The graphics performance <laughs> but I, the last generation. For this market, for that's not an issue. For those who use OpenCL, and you all know you should, this delivers seven teraflops of compute power to your applications. Of course, you want to hook on the latest third-party displays, and this supports 4K displays. Yes. Multiple streams of 4K displays. Over you Thunderbolt. Have you have to have a Thunderbolt display. HDMI displays won't do it. On the built-in dual workstation graphics. Comes with 37% more specs. The Final than any Cut other Pro <laughs> team is hard at work on a version of Final Cut Pro 10 that will support all the performance and graphics capabilities of this machine. You can be this guy. Alex Lindsay's going crazy. It is a Mac unlike any we've ever made. The design, it delivers so I like much it. more performance, capabilities, and expansion than anything we've mag. made. And here it You're is alongside the it. previous generation. Uh, Look how tiny that thing is. is. It's a lot smaller. It's about the half the size of the yeah. real pro. Yeah, it goes right up to the power button. The team has open. packed all this capability inside. Yeah, that's about a third the size. Probably rebuffering. Hey, stream. Doing that often Talk. One eighth the volume of the previous eighth generation. Eighth of the volume. The one the thing volume? everyone loved about the old generation Mac Pro is those it's handles better. on the top, so you can move it around to get access to the I/O. Well, the entire top of the new generation Rotates. Mac Pro is a handle. Uh, Just put your hand in it. So it's a little. Spin it's a little, it around. <laughs> get access to the I/O. It's, a it's all organized beautifully on the back this for you. This looks nice. There is audio. Now this is a preview, so we don't expect this right six. away. Firewire 2 being driven Server by Server racks will look like line racks. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's one of the things. This is definitely not rack mountable. Gigabit no. Ethernet, HDMI out, and it has a motion sensor, so when you turn it, it even lights up to show you where oh, the I.O. Nice. is. Some dis disappointment over a lack of NVIDIA options on the GPU. It is a stunning product. This is without doubt the future of the Pro desktop. It is coming later this year. Did say this is a sneak peek. It is designed by brilliant engineers in California and assembled here in the USA. And that's the one. Assembled. Austin, right? Yeah, I think so. We're outside of Austin. Right? And for all of you who are dying to see it put through its paces and what it can do, we have a special session tomorrow, a lunchtime session for all the developers here, where our good friends at Pixar, along with developers from the Foundry, are going to show you some amazing character animation from the upcoming movie, Monsters U, running on the new generation yeah, Mac that's Pro. That's a good idea. Check it out. One and of your movies, Tom. Pro. Back to you, Tim. Yes, it is. Very nice. Very nice. But no, I have to point out, no MacBook refresh. No Retina MacBook refresh. No, nothing at all, although he did say he was going out of order. It's, it's, it's killer. Next, I'd like to talk about iCloud. We've now passed 300 million iCloud accounts, making iCloud the fastest growing cloud service ever. The now, Xbox announcement's still going on. By comparison, yeah. it took Facebook five years to reach this many accounts. Is there anything going on at the, uh, the most uh, nothing, popular nothing features important. of iCloud uh, is Halo iTunes and the cloud. Halo Confirmed for Xbox One. 60 frames a second, and now they're showing Titanfall, which is a huge MechWarrior style game. Uh, open environments, lots of stuff you can do with it. I mean, it looks cool. But I think the big news, uh, November, Xbox One, four ninety nine pre-order or reserve yours today. Will do. Yeah. Will do. And an updated Xbox 360. They're right. going to keep that around for a little bit. Available too. today. Right. Back we go to San Francisco. Social gaming network now with over 240 million users. I don't users. think we missed anything. 60 of the top no, they're just talking about how they have lots of apps. The app yes. so we know that. So game center support hey, right show us what game center looks like now. iCloud is no new icon. 
has incredible hate that icon. scale. The worst. Like sending 800 billion iMessages or a mind boggling 7.4 trillion push what? notifications. See, so yeah, I hate Nobody that notification. Yeah. yeah. It's really iCloud annoying. Allows us to and you can't turn it off forever. You can only turn it off for a cloud day. Cloud services into so many of our products <laughs> across Apple in both OS 10 and They're now wrapping at the Xbox event. So uh, we, Today, that's, that's the big story. Is closing or, or hip hop? How we're deeply integrating iCloud. Everybody's come on stage. The next version of iWorld. They're raising the roof. And to do that, I'd Represent. like to invite Roger Rosner up to the stage. Roger Rosner. Roger. A new face. Okay. Roger Rosner. Roger, Roger. That's, That's the great. first time we saw that arena. iWork hasn't been updated since Hello. 2009. All right, let me tell you a little bit about iWork. That's why we haven't seen much of Roger. iWork is pages, numbers, and keynote. And we think it's the best way to create beautiful documents. This is long overdue for presentations. Update. Of course, iRock was born on the Mac, and it has full support for the awesome feature set of Mac OS X and Mac hardware. We also have amazingly powerful and fully multi-touch versions of these apps on the iPad and on the iPhone. We think our multi-touch apps are the most powerful productivity apps ever created for a mobile device. And later this year, we're going to have awesome new releases of both our Mac and our iOS suite. Rosner Z. Vice today, President in charge of iWork, I which has been the, the newest member of most the iWork. relaxing position at Apple for the last four years. iWork for iCloud. iWork for iCloud lets you create beautiful documents right in a, a browser pause. on a Mac or on a PC. So we don't know what the hell it means. And rather than talk about it, let's just jump right into a demo. Is this uh, Office 365 from Apple? Yeah, it sounds like it. Or at least storing. I don't know if it's collaboration. But it's done that all along. And right. I remember the failed iWork.com yeah. effort. Here. Maybe this is the Go return of iWork.com. straight to iWork. my iCloud homepage where you see three new app icons. I'm going to click on Pages. And oh, here's all the documents I've been working on on my Mac or my iPad and saved in iCloud. I can create a new document by clicking Plus, and I have a bunch of beautiful Apple design templates. But let's just open a document we were working on. And as you can see, it's a beautiful pages document. I'm very disappointed that they haven't updated Great fonts, the uh, Mac graphics, Pro. images, page layouts. That must be a fall. This is all yeah, happening no, in a web no browser, of course. So I can just click here and type. And over here, I have all the formatting controls in our new context-sensitive format panel. So I'll just select some text, go up to my styles, choose a text style. Select some more text. Choose another. So I can click on some images. You see my controls now show me image controls. You always had an iWork on icon styles. on your iCloud. Choose that one. It just showed documents. Now, of course, Pages has always been looks great like the at apps graphics. are now in the cloud. So how do I add graphics? Well, I drag one in from my desktop. Maybe a subscription. So it is more like Drop Office. Are, are we going to see there. a subscription? Drag it around. Often. How are they going to do this? I guess it's just part of your iCloud subscription. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, we know we live in a world full of Microsoft Office documents. So how do we work with Office? Well, I have a Word document here. And I'm just going to drag that in from my desktop and drop that in the pages for iCloud window. It uploads it. I open it up. And, and Wi-Fi sucks. And here I am editing a Microsoft Word document mm, in Pages for iCloud. Yeah. So this is their response to Office 365. Now I'm very curious how they're going to do this. And to All Google right, Drive. Let's take a look at numbers. Back to my iCloud homepage. Click the numbers icon. Again, a bunch of beautiful documents. As you can see, this spreadsheet has a bunch of different sheets in it. Great charts, great tables, and graphics. So much prettier Here on the than last the sheet, Microsoft Word We have a table Word that document. hasn't been finished. So I'm just going to click in a cell, hit equals. We get help for the over 250 functions that we have. But I'll just type sum, select this column, and there you go. My chart updates. If I want to fill this across the rest of the table, I just drag it across. A real spreadsheet. Again, this is all happening in a web browser. Hmm. Microsoft demonstrated years ago. Literally. Yeah, this really isn't very All exciting. Right, let's try it's catch up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
I will open this presentation here. They did need to do something. iWork has just not been updated in years. And it's a real keynote presentation. I guess the real question is... Photographs, text, fonts. I can rearrange what's this cost? slides if I want to. Especially if you've got I something like Google Docs slide. that people I'll are right. so used to. Down here. Choose this layout. Let's give it a title. We welcome everybody joining us from the Xbox let's, announcement. Let's drag an image. Our, our numbers are suddenly going up very rapidly. We think a lot of you are watching Move Xbox around, get the alignment directly and uh, have tuned into the, the Apple Double click keynote. to go into masking mode. Right now we're seeing a demonstration of an online-only version of iWork. It. Pages, numbers, Let's uh, give it a photo border. Let's make the border a little thicker. Roger Rossner, the VP let's, of uh, Work, and the guy in charge the of, Google, of Apple's uh, textbooks initiative. This is all happening in a browser. It's pretty incredible. On stage. Earlier, Craig Federighi came on stage, uh, did a great demo. They're really pushing this. The next version of OS X, Mavericks. Did he announce a... Uh, you heard him right. It's called date. Mavericks. It's called Mavericks. They're, they're changing to California locations, we think. And there, you see our beautiful Keynote 3D animations. And the only hardware announcement. Browser window. Two new MacBook Airs with better battery life than Haswell chipset. And a preview of a Mac Pro due this fall. All right, I'm sure everyone wants to know changed. how does this work on Windows. Well, a non tech is. is saying the Mac Pro is not so the Haswell Xeon part. It is an Ivy Bridge E. Chrome here. I'm just going to fire up Chrome. Which will mean it's out of date the day it ships, unfortunately. He's opening it in Chrome. And it's logged in as the same user I was logged into on the Mac, so I'm going to open that same document. He's using it yeah, in Windows Chrome on, on Windows. Chrome. So it's HTML5. It's the same. There's the slide we just made. Let's uh, go. That's really uh, great news. And if you're uh, uh, living in the Apple universe, that cross-platform is important. I doubt very many Windows users will make the switch to iWork, especially there, with Office. Make that mask dominance, a little bit tighter and move it around a little. And there you go. I'm editing a keynote Every document Bridgie on Windows is a post as well part. <laughs> The server chips are a little bit out in a different sequence. And it was my understanding there would be a fourth generation Xeon as well. Let's get to iOS. All right, that is iWork for iCloud. Now, we know in a lot of cases that the best user experiences are made with native nice app technologies. But I think you can see with iWork for iCloud, you can do some pretty great stuff on the web. As I mentioned, we support IE, or we support Safari best, I should say. Uh, like all websites, we run best in Safari. We also support IE and Chrome. And now you have iWork on all your devices. You can create a document on your Mac. You can edit on your PC. It's part of your iCloud you subscription? You can present from your iPhone. We're going to make this available starting today as a developer beta. Just go to iCloud, and we'll expand that beta to include all users of iCloud later in the year. Mm. Thank you very much. Send us your feedback. Well, OK. Sure. Okay, next we'd like to turn our attention to iOS. So I'm not clear. So, well, I guess we'll find out once they get into public release. But uh, is this an add-on? Is it something you get with iCloud? I think it's something you get with iCloud. That sounds expensive enough that you ought to get something. Yes. iCloud is now down, by the way. Uh -huh. It's an incredible number. But... It's extraordinary, and we're proud so of this it. This is where he would bring out Johnny Ive if he were to bring out Johnny Ive. We want to make the best products that people use more and love video. more than anyone else's. And I'm really happy to tell you, people are using our products substantially more than anyone else's. Let me show you. This recent study from Experian showed that iPhone users use the iPhone 50% more. You're watching breaking news Android coverage of Apple's WWDC keynote on Twit Live, brought to you by our friends at Slingbox, makers of the Slingbox 500 with built in Wi Fi, HDMI connectivity, full HD 1080p, connected to your home theater system. Then fire up the Slingbox app on your notebook, on your iPad, or your Android device, your iPhone, and you're watching your home TV anywhere you go. It's great. Check it out at Amazon, Best Buy. Slingbox.com slash twit. Now back to Tim Cook and iOS 7. Lots of, uh, right now, it's, it's the, isn't it great? Isn't it wonderful? Everybody loves apps. it. Mm -hmm. They evidently also buy a lot of everything else, according to a recent IBM survey. 
Both iPhone and iPad customers. The pitch to developers here is you make more money on iOS. You may not have more users, but you make more money. Mm -hmm. All other Android devices combined on the most critical day of shopping last year. Now, it probably doesn't surprise you if people are using them more, they love them more. And this is what is most important to us. We want love. iPhone was named number one in customer satisfaction by J.D. Power, not just once, but nine consecutive times. The first time this has ever been done. <laughs> and iOS Even with satisfaction clapping. is literally off the charts. <laughs> Change really? Did that? The paid, the paid uh, you got flappers. Awards. The staff in the front row. Yeah, look at those people the iOS team that responded that they're very satisfied, and really look at the detail, which I'm sometimes known to do. You would see that iOS blows out everyone else, 20 points better than our closest competitor, and almost 25 points better than Android. One of the reasons for this is that we provide amazing software updates. Putting BlackBerry on there is just kicking somebody off. <laughs> and we do this easily. It's interesting Windows Phone beats Android. To as many users as possible. Let me show you. Over 90% of iOS users are using the latest version of iOS. Again, uh, that's in a stark talking point contrast to in the stark world contrast of Android. To Android. <laughs> and by the way, this is the most ideal state of Android. It only includes those versions of Android which talk to the Google Play Store. So it doesn't include things like Kindles and Nooks. But even That's then, fair. it's a pretty bleak story. Bleak More story. More than a third of Android users are using an operating system that was released in 2010. Ooh. <gasps> and if you look at the Customers of each this operating is, this system. This is for developers. I like how he does like dramatic version. whispering. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even close. He's been coached. 2010. He's been coached. Now, this Spent some time with the Frank Maggot users, folks. But this version fragmentation Watch his hands. You can always tell with the hands. It's See that? The hand know. fold and the thumb move. In fact, if you do the math, you would find that iOS 6 is the world's most the, uh, popular mobile operating system. People who system. train media and presenters will tell you, never point, it's aggressive. Android, and so you can really always tell somebody's been trained because they'll keep their mm -hmm. pointer finger now, folded. Now this is why Notice. we get so excited when we're working on a new version of iOS. It looks like he's about to because choke we me. we know that we can positively affect- <laughs> You're supposed to go like, Bill Clinton was a master. <laughs> You're supposed to go like that. Hundreds of millions of users. And that is exactly what we've been up to. There's an example of fragmentation the team at right Apple there. <laughs> has been working incredibly hard on the latest version of iOS. Here we go. And today, it's a great thrill that I announce iOS 7. It's a thinner number. iOS 7 Black and white is flat all over. It's changed to iOS it is a since thinner the number. introduction of iPhone. It's packed with amazing new features and a stunning new user interface. It's drop pretty, shadow yeah. is above. We prepared a video <laughs> to show you our thinking behind the design. This is the Ive video. And I'd like to run it for you now. Yeah, Here Johnny it is. in a white room. Virtual Johnny Ive. We designed iOS 7. Aluminium. To be <laughs> the most beautiful iOS ever. Flat. Hello. Hey, we Baba Louis. thought of design as being so much more than just the way something looks. It's the way it feels. It's the whole thing. Yeah. The way something actually works on so many different levels. We're looking actually now at a MacBook Air. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ultimately, of course, design defines so much of our experience. Look at these earbuds. They're beautiful. I think there is a profound and enduring beauty 
in simplicity, in clarity, in efficiency. True simplicity. Oh, I thought that was... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so it's part of the name. What the, the heck? Use it to do it. Johnny Ives soaring <laughs> rhetoric. That's, it's not fair. It's about bringing order <laughs> to complexity. Order. What? The new slide to unlock. It's going up. I love sideways. it. Is Have they patented clear, that? Flattened icons for sure. Oh, God. What? Controls and sliding up from below. That way they don't look like Android. Oh, my gosh. It really does look different. And it is applied 80s. across the entire Holy crud. System. Yeah, very big. The thin fonts are right. Lots of fluorescent neon. Very flat. No skeuomorphism. Well, there's a little bit there. There's some texture. We've considered the tiniest details. Genre. Like the and gotten rid of them. Yes. To much larger ones. The headline is like one pixel all the shorter. Icons. And developing a grid system allowed us uh, to achieve a system. much more harmonious relationship between individual elements. We've also incorporated a whole new palette of colors. I don't... No, I hate those colors. if I like Distinct this. Functional layers. Ruber said I people like would design, be unhappy when they saw it. There would be people like you, Sarah Lane, who would not be happy. I can't tell if it's just so different that I'm upset or and if I really hate it. You know who will like this? A sense of your people been using Android. Very comfortable with this whole idea of sliding up, sliding down. These planes. Well, that doesn't bother me. It's the way that it looks. New approaches to animation and I like the cleaner design and the, the lack of the skeuomorphism. I, I like the flatness of it. I, I don't like the color palette, personally. Well, of course, remember, they can't control the palettes used by developers. So this, sure. this is only an the Apple app. Responding to your movements oh, that's drives interesting. the parallax to create. Wow. That is very interesting. You give the screen a 3D look. Yeah. The background moves at a different rate than the foreground. That's interesting. In many ways, that's a whiz bang. Try yeah. to whiz that's a nice feature. Look at the safari controls. And differential. Well, they've really changed. Oh, wow. there's the uh, wow. indicator wow. for the uh, oh. cell phone connect. It's now dots so instead of lines. Elevates your Am I crazy? Control. Is it hideous? Even no, I think it's nice. You'll get used to it. I'll get used to it. Yeah. Your Better. This modern has a very noticeable effect Round on buttons the way your iPhone looks your phone dialer. and feels across the entire system. That is the biggest change right there. And I think a very valuable change. Instead of having to go into settings, you can slide up the key settings. That's something from Android. They really needed to do this. They needed to do this. The keyboard looks the same. They need the iPhone to feel completely different. Still all uppercase on the keyboard, which I think is just strange. It's cleaner, though. to take an experience. Paused momentarily. It's that people know very well and actually add to it to make it more useful, to make it more enjoyable. To create it, and yeah, look at the we dots together, a, a broad range of expertise. No, no, what are those dots? That's instead of a carrier. With what we've been able to achieve together, we see iOS 7 as defining an important new direction. And in many ways, looking so much more like jelly bean. <laughs> Actually, like jelly beans, like jelly bellies. Jelly bellies. Um, and, and as some are pointing out in the chat room, WebOS influenced heavily. Mm, with the cards. Heard. They were yeah. sort of the first of the card yeah. type yeah. OSs. I think that's fine. I, I, it does not bother me when companies are influenced by others. That's, that's how things advance. I don't... It's a living language of design. Yeah. I think this is an improvement, and the developers, or somebody does, maybe the Apple team does, they're standing up. But sustained applause for the new look. We're going to absolutely love iOS 7. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. this, thank you. This major effort, this major effort is only possible because of existing the incredible apps collaboration. Well, none of them will change, Johnny, right? Yeah, but you know, how will they feel right. within this They'll new feel look? Funky. You'll have to update them. Incredible imagine. engineering team. Without further ado, I'd like to invite Craig back up to take you through iOS 7, the biggest change to iOS since the iPhone. Craig? All right. Let's get Funny Man back up here. Johnny Ive uh, in the front row there. You saw him in his white T-shirt. Well, Not him. Cosplayer. Of all of the engineers and designers <laughs> Johnny Ive cosplayer in the front row. So hard to make today a reality 
I'm absolutely thrilled to have this opportunity to show you iOS 7. Let's take a look. It's unbelievable. It's just gorgeous. From the typography on this lock screen to the vitality of the background and the animation to the home screen. Arrows at with top and icons. bottom for swiping it's up. So and great. Down. They just look fantastic. And no more drop background? shadow, and, or very you little know, drop shadow. A lot shadow. of us have our own some. wallpaper. You know, we like pictures of our family there. And now the parallax that liveliness great. Like that. actually carries through to the home screen. That's something that's uh, that's all very neat. I've never seen that. Anymore. It actually tracks your that's motion. Very neat. And has parallax that so there's a drop shadow. It's just softer. Icons. It's really incredible. And it carries Translucent over across dock. the system, this liveliness. I mean, just take a Larger look dock, too, it at something like. like weather, where the motion conveys this information and oh, where the edge-to-edge edge yeah, yeah, this looks like. It looks like that Yahoo weather app. Yeah, every weather app like has that. It's, nothing it's so nice. Celebrate. <laughs> Great for apps you use every day. Even well, weather apps. on weather feeding it, too, isn't it? Yeah, weather HD looked like that four years ago. I mean, it's not... Your email is gorgeous. That's interesting. Your friends never looked more attractive. <laughs> hey, Bridget. And Game Center. We just completely ran out of green felt. Ah, thank God. Oh, my gosh. Okay, Huge. I'm sold. Now you Look, like Al Gore. It. Al Gore is sitting next to Al Johnny. Al Gore is I. like, ha, oh, you made a Game and Center And that was, joke. by the way, that was uh, Steve Jobs' wife Good next to Al Gore. So. Aha. Uh -huh. hmm. The clocks Laureen, great. Al Gore, and, even apps like Stocks, and Johnny Ive in the Compass. front and center. They just have this look of precision, this sense of purpose. The best way to appreciate iOS 7 is to see it live. I'd like to give you a demo right now. Big changes to uh, iOS. <clears throat> Craig Federighi, who's in charge of iOS, now demoing. So let's take our first live look at iOS 7. Here it is. On an iPhone 5. Device actually responds to the motion in my hand. Completely redesigned lock screen. Just slide out the lock screen. You see how it slides in. I want you all to look away for a moment while I type in my. <laughs> okay, you can look again. One, two, three, Passcode four. one two three four. Oh, just in case you weren't following. All right. So here we here we are on the gorgeous new home screen. Let's go into weather. You see on weather, it's a little cloudy today. I can actually tap here. The degrees get more information like humidity and. I wouldn't spend Rain. a lot of time with this. This is uh, swipe through some playing catch up with apps from five years ago. I don't Clear know. in mm -hmm. Sydney. Kind of hot in Phoenix. Apple's on I apps on Clear iOS, in, uh, I might add. Big Thunder Mountain. It's looking a little little rough. Where's that? We've got some uh, some thunder Disneyland. brewing. Oh yeah. <laughs> some heavy snow here I in the North Pole. He's getting applaud for that. <laughs> and. Uh, Tropical storm here in Gilligan's Island. I hope they, they got off that island. <laughs> so, and it's more functional than ever. If you pinch, you get this gorgeous overview of all your cities. That's nice. Even with the time, it's so it's a world clock there as well. There are a huge number of Let's take a look at the calendar. apps like this. You understand, right? I mean, it's not. But it doesn't mean that so clean. It, Apple it didn't can't do a better need one. their Wipe own you know, like update. This. Turn it into landscape. This is native. See your whole week at a glance. Got a big week ahead. Look at that. Very different look for the calendar. Scroll it's like I use a third-party calendar app. So right. and, yeah, well, and agenda. And looks too. a lot like yeah. agenda. It does look like agenda, sunrise. yeah. I, like, I use some. messages. Heavily influenced yeah, by I use agenda. Fantastic Al. Yeah. Notice as we scroll, we have this great sort of playful motion. Oh, that's playful. Bubbles. Uh, that's playful. Let's bring up the keyboard. <laughs> Isn't it, though? As you slide contents of the keyboard, you see the layering and transparency. I would call it frolics. I kind of like this. <laughs> this is nice. Now, from the left edge of the device, it's great for using the device with one hand. If I want to just go back, I can just swipe from the edge of the display, pull back like that, move in. A lot of white out. space. Yeah. So clean and natural. I There's actually like that. Waz and his wife Janet. I'm go here space. into my games folder. I can now have multiple pages. Store hundreds. Ah. Oh, that's cool. So folders now have pages, so they're not limited to a certain number of static icons. How many icons. pages in a folder? Take a look at uh, Game Center. Don't ask uh, questions like that. <laughs> Hair supply. Bring it on. I like it. Some of those good-looking friends. Let's take a look at mail. The type also, is an app I so don't clean. use. Yeah, and, and I, you know, message. I think probably a lot of new users use the stock edge apps, edge but photos. yeah, it's really I think great. it's one of the first and things a lot of more sophisticated users course. do is bring She's in their own between messages, Gmail or like whatever. This. It's so great. Show deleting. Slide across on any item. 
Oh, you can get okay. it oh. straight out of mailbox. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. everybody's well. doing it now. Sherlock. Mail. Finally, let's take a look at Notification Center. Same as always, we can just swipe it's down. It's ironic that Apple uh, steals nice freely from others see while all notifications, just actively my one. pursuing those who steal from this great them. new Today View. So or you can see your friends' allegedly birthdays, mm -hmm. current look at the weather. They make no upcoming. bones about taking uh, features from uh, other apps. Uh, Apple Store is still down. Your calendar, your stocks, and even a quick look at tomorrow. You know what's really great is for the first time ever, Notification Center is now available from the lock screen That's as the well. top slide. You don't even have to unlock your device. Yeah, again, so very Android. A quick look at iOS 7. It's a comprehensive end-to-end -end redesign of the user experience. Installing iOS 7 on your phone is like getting an entirely new phone, but one you already know how to use, one that's so much more beautiful and functional than ever before. But iOS 7 is actually more than that. It's also a major feature release as well. I have 10 features I want to talk to you about today, starting with Control Center. That's Control a new Center is something that's yeah. so simple and yet it's so essential. Strange icon. You have those switches that you just you want to get the, to um, really quickly from wherever you are. For, well, now with Control data Center, service. Is that what that is? Yeah. It's no longer it's those a, dots. It's like a progress bar. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was in lieu of a carrier. Uh, there's Lorreen Jobs and uh, Al Gore. Adjust your brightness, play a song, even get at a flashlight. Flashlight and built in. Available from anywhere. Another fine Android screen. feature. So if you wake up in the middle of the night and you need to find something, <laughs> it really, your flashlight. It is right how there. people use their phone. Not customizable, though. though. No, Center. but it's, it's really Next, interesting. Let's talk about multitasking. All right. Now, iOS 7 has always been built on the industrial strength foundations of OS X. Got a feel for all it's the people who have flashlight apps who are now multitasking capabilities. But yeah. we have to be careful about how we've exposed these to applications. <sighs> you don't have to turn to fart apps. I don't think that's something Apple life. will ever uh, venture into. Now, in iOS 4, Glad. we did add support for select kinds of applications to do multitasking. Things like playing music in the background or receiving a voice over IP System-wide multitasking would be a big deal. Well, now, in iOS 7, I'm pleased to announce that we're going to have multitasking for all apps. That's huge, but a real challenge to deal with mm -hmm. from the OS's point of view, Johnny I. Well, expect a lot of apps to get kicked out of the app store so how for does it work? Yeah. not doing it right. Well, Imagine you have yeah, an app that can kill your battery. constantly throughout the day, a social it's networking actually the, one app of the or something. single biggest You're problems on the Android the platform. Well, it's the iOS single biggest reason to jailbreak for me still yeah. is multitasking. But you're right, you have to be careful with it. Background activity to stay up to date. Facebook can kill an Android phone in hours by checking regularly for updates like night, every few minutes. Well, iOS 7 notices that too. And it's the single best thing you can do on Android is delete Facebook. cycles just in time so it's up to date for when you need it. They may be doing a power nap style uh, consolidation of scheduling. wake locks on this. iOS 7 does yeah, opportunistic scheduling. updates. The average there user wakes their device dozens of this times a day, and those provide great opportunities when the system's already powered up to update apps in the background. Yeah. It also adapts intelligently to network conditions. So if it's in, you have this good is key. coverage, if you can build this and do it right. Time to fetch. And it coalesces updates across yeah. multiple applications. So once you have those radios powered up, let's multiple applications take advantage of it for their background so updates. this is the equivalent of power. Finally, now. iOS 7 responds to push notifications as a trigger to give that application time in the background. So when you follow that notification, the app will already... Android update. does not do very well. Um, Apple has an opportunity to get that battery life up. Now, iOS 7 also has a great new user interface for moving between all I the... I wonder if this is going to require new hardware. Now, you can... He's Double click, and move into 5. Notification Center, and just swipe between your running applications, tap, and move right in. And that is multitasking in iOS 7. All right. Kind of this, this might, this might Next, really be a 5S about feature. Safari. Safari is the most popular mobile browser in the world. And in iPhone iOS 4. 7, we're making it even better. Has a great new full screen. Look, so you can really focus on your content. Something Apple's you always pull done. Pull down, right? or tap at the top. You can now get a smart search field. From that search field, you can get it one tap access to all of your favorites, as well as do search and access URLs. 
and it's a great new interface for your tabs. In addition to oh, all that's of this, nice. I like that. it has parental controls like a news and stand. integration with a the same rack. iCloud keychain you saw earlier with Mavericks. I'd like to give you a demo of Safari ah, now. Good, they're moving the iCloud keychain to the Let's mobile. Take a look. That was ex to be expected, but yeah. that's great. Yeah. yeah, they said that when they announced Did they? it earlier. Yeah. yeah, it's not much use if it's just on Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it would get kind of silly. Head on in to Safari. So here we are in Safari. I'm going to just zoom in on this page. I want you watch as I scroll, all the controls just recede, and now you have that full screen for your content. We've really improved the way you navigate now in Safari. I'm just going to tap in here to a link to a detailed story. We can even zoom in, of course, on this page. And that same gesture you saw earlier for going back, well, of course, that works in Safari as well. So I just swipe in from the edge of the display, and I can navigate back and forth through my browser history just like that. It's such a fantastic way to browse. Next, let's look at that unified search field. I'm just going to tap up here at the top. You see I have one tap access to all my favorites. It's really convenient, but I'm going to type in this case. So I'll type D-I-S. And you notice I have a top URL hit, as well as Google search suggestions as well, available all right here. We've really improved bookmarking as well. I'll use this Google bookmark is not control exiled. down at the bottom. I see no. my bookmark folders. All my bookmarks. We also have shared no. links. You can see stories posted by people you follow on Twitter and my reading list. And now, just like you saw in Mavericks, on iOS, you can scroll continuously from article to article without coming back to the list. Do you think they padded really the keynote awesome. to make sure iOS 7 got on Next, stage let's after take a look Microsoft? At, uh, <laughs> no, I doubt tabs. they paid any attention to yeah. Microsoft's schedule. Into so tabs. To we have noticed, though, that uh, our numbers have been no going up since Microsoft left the stage. And down at the bottom are also all your iCloud tabs. So you can see what you left open on your other devices as well. And tabs, they're really nice to use. You can just tap, just sweep into a tab, back out, back in, back out. It's just fantastic. If you want to reorder your tabs, just tap and hold. Just rearrange them like this. And if you're done with a tab, just swipe it off to the side, and it goes away. And that's the new Safari. Web 2630 says very Metro-ish as well. And I think yeah. the flat definitely influenced control center. by uh, Microsoft's so I'm just design. Swipe up Is that tab screen Rolodex-like? And up comes control <laughs> center. So you have these great switches at the top. You can turn on and off. Do not disturb, for instance. Access my brightness. You can even access a flashlight. Really useful at night. Play a song. And of course, this is available to me everywhere. So if I'm in Safari, for instance, let's bring it up here. You can turn off that music. And you notice how it's layering and transparency. Take the personality of the environment. Yeah, that's nice. Where you bring it up. That's very pretty. That's Control Center. I like that. I have no Can idea. Flashlight. Twice? It's just a great way to get across all the things you're doing on your device. Well, so I wanted to show that you could do it on, on top of any app, any arm. Jump into multitasking. Oh, that's I nice. That is definitely the cards interface from uh, WebOS. Want to move into one? Messages. Double tap. Back out. Move into mail. You know, it's a mixture out. of uh, copying, just catch like up, this. and innovation. It's really, really nice. It's really a little. How far back will this go on iPhones for people with older iPhones? I think you're gonna have to have a five. I really do. Yeah, I do too. So, of course, there's, there's much, much more to iOS 7, including AirDrop. Oh, that's nice. This is something that has been on the desktop, the ability to copy from one Mac to AirDrop another. AirDrop is absolutely the easiest way to share with the people that are right around you. So now, when you're in any app that supports a share sheet, you bring up the share sheet, and your friends that are all around you just show up right there. You tap on so one, response to the and they're going to get Samsung a uh, panel right on their display, and they can accept what it is that you shared. They accept it. They're taken right into the app. And you know if you want to share with multiple people, you just tap, tap, tap. No need to wander around the room bumping your phone. Ah, there's the response to Samsung. Yeah. Actually, you no longer need to do that with Samsung. You'll see other Samsung Galaxy phones in the room. Uh, 
Now, this is system wide for any is app it, that supports it, the, the shared question sheet. Is, is it, and of course, is it Wi Fi? Is it Bluetooth? Peer to peer Wi Fi for peer maximum peer, speed, yeah. and all your That's transmissions are securely encrypted. Because it uses the latest Wi Fi hardware, it's supported on the iPhone 5, the fourth generation iPad, iPad mini, Oof. and the fifth Can't generation use, iPod Touch. You have to use the brand that new iPad for that. Is AirDrop. Next, let's talk about the camera. So now, your camera in iOS 7 is four cameras in one. You can just swipe from your video camera to your photo camera, to your square cropped camera, huh? to your pano mm. camera. To your Instagram and when camera. You're taking stills, nice. You now have access to live photo filters. This is good. From some gorgeous black and white to some classic color filters as well. Apparently so the kids are liking the filters. It's like the filters. Everybody to manage loves filters. your photos. Mm -hmm. And it's the new photos app. You know, for Swiping many users, is a good way to do that. This is. is what their photo organization looks like. An endless, unorganized stream of their camera roll. We've all if been you use there. An iPhone, but yes, you know, it doesn't what it have to like. be this way. Oh. It doesn't look like that on any other phone. There's great time. information in those photos. iOS knows where you took the photos and when you took them, and that provides inherent structure that we can use to organize those photos. And now, in photos in iOS 7, we do. We organize them into moments. You mean, I'd like to give you a like demo events, of that right now. Locations. <laughs> I'm looking at my HTC One. That, that's been doing that since I got it. So let's take a look now at the photos this app. Is the, this is ketchup, obviously. But so here you very see photos. Yeah, this is a lot that nicer. were taken in San Francisco. Very clean see, interface. I got to say, I like it. To organize very these white. photos explicitly, yeah. they have these labels like the Palace of Fine Arts. The, Samsung Baker phones Beach, use OLED displays, which Lombard Street. It provides this are much more powerful for black for appreciating so the photos. Emphasize black the more trips, this is a way more to time in San Francisco Golden brighter, Gate, San Francisco Fisherman's look, Wharf. But then you see, a, we have home. Display. We have photos taken at home, and photos taken at the elementary school, and around I'm that. I'm very, area. very much looking now, forward to what out, metadata is missing a, a and what hilarious consequences ensue on my own photos. Intelligently together into collections. But you have to turn on location to. Multiple for this to work, obviously, and that's not always on. So yeah, I've turned it off. I've had it on. A lot of times people don't want location on all their photos for obvious reasons. This also makes certain apps that uh, arrange photos by geolocation. Yeah, less, less well. value. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you showed one. I've forgotten the name of it. On i5 cluster, maybe. This is good. This is you, you very much needed this. And as mm -hmm. I as I said, HTC One's done this. Other Android devices have done this. The stock Android gallery does this a little bit, but not quite and as well. And look at how we pull out the interesting places that you went in that year. Like 2011 was Colorado and Hawaii. 2012 went to South America. You may not remember when you did it, but iOS I love does. the thumbnails. That's it's one thing right that I've never seen anybody do. These and, little you know, tiny thumbnails. That's a nice display, mosaic. You can even kind of make out patterns of photos and when different locations yes. are. And of course, we found like we had the urge that we wanted to just tap in right from here. And so now, in fact, you can. No. You can just touch <laughs> and scrub. If you've got really pointy fingers, for, you can pick like the that. picture it's you really want. Just amazing. <laughs> wow. So just pick a photo here, That's a nice feature. I, I Again, I haven't seen anybody do that. Has, have you seen any? No, no. no. It, it, it was basically filters, just endless scrolling. So filters yeah. here. I can try different color effects. This is something that, that like, definitely needed to be done. This is, an, an, this is in the innovation like category. Apply it, save that photo away. Is it we caught up but did it well Yeah, enough. caught up and leapt ahead. That's what Apple sharing. does. I think caught up and leapt ahead. We have, uh, this is, uh, AirDrop this is right nice. here. If any of you were running iOS 7, I'd see you. It looks like it didn't leak, so that's good. You're not in there right now. <laughs> you have AirDrop. You have access I to love Craig. other photos. Craig's got to do more on stage. Right here, which is really handy. Great photo very sharing relaxed, option is iCloud photo sharing. I'm going to tap on that now. It's going to iCloud photo sharing. You know, Apple here, has always been restrictive in who it can add to share its to. share sheets. So I'm on family photos um, now, and you see the, re the value of that. It's a much cleaner interface. On, uh, on uh, Android, you can have a scroll now, that goes on for other days. Other people can share into my photo stream as well. So oh, this is nice. great. That's a great. This really does make yeah. those apps obsolete. I'll just select a, a photo stream here and uh, type a little message. We'll post that photo. So we've made it really, really easy nice. to I share. And we've also made it a really great experience to experience the photos you and others have shared with this new iPad. shared tab at the bottom. So I'm going to go in here, you can see my photo with a comment. I can see the comments of other people and the photos that they've Who shared. Who needs Google Plus? And now I've got Apple we Plus. even support sharing video via wow. iCloud photo sharing. 
And we have a great way to just this is browse not a message those shared either. photos. Just I just tilt the device into the landscape. Cloud. I can scroll through it like this and just look at how beautiful that I don't is. Think anybody's doing what a great like way this. to experience so that your Google photos. Plus. Google so Plus that's does the this. new Photos app in iOS 7. It's like Facebook timeline a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. It's peer-to-peer, -peer, though. It's private. So mm -hmm. timeline's a little more difficult to say. I just want Tom to see these pictures. So integration uh, with Google Plus makes that easy. It's a huge looks part like Apple's of the experience well. of iOS, and never more so than in iOS 7. So to take you through some of those features, I'd like to bring up Eddie Q. Eddie, Eddie Q. Siri time. Great job, Craig. Thank you. Thanks. It's great to be here. So let's talk about Siri. The first thing is Siri has a gorgeous new interface. Now as I speak, <gasps> you'll see a sound Ooh. wave across the bottom. Yes, I do like. And you get the results in a beautiful, gorgeous, clean way. But Siri has always been a lot about your, the voice of Siri, and we've got an all new voice. They what? have to because everybody's been using the Siri voice. And you can also choose a male voice. Hi, Eddie. What can I do for you? Sounds good. And we've got high That's quality, good. thank Doesn't you. Doesn't sound mechanical. <laughs> we've also got high quality female and, and, and male voices for French. <laughs> as well as German. Was kann ich für dich tun, Eddie? And we're going to be adding other languages over time. Now, Siri is also getting a lot smarter. It knows how it to control to. more of your device. So play you can say, voicemail. play my last voicemail. Increase brightness. Or turn on Bluetooth. Or increase my Tell brightness. Tell me about surfing. <laughs> What are the best beaches for surfing? <laughs> this is good. They needed to do this. Of course, they're responding to Google now. And it can answer a lot more questions because we've integrated some new services like Twitter. So you can see what people are saying or what's happening. We've integrated the world's largest encyclopedia. No, he's not doing a live demo. Yeah. And we've even integrated web search results from Bing right inside Bing. of Siri. And it's great for photos, too. What? Oh. And that's some of the new features of Siri in iOS 7. Not a live demo. Now, Siri is also a big part of our next feature. iOS in the car. Again, this is straight out of Android. Now, 95% of the cars being sold today have integrated music playback and control from an iOS device. But we want to take this integration to a whole nother level. What if you could get iOS on the screen that is built into your car ah. so that you can make phone calls, play music, go to maps, get your iMessages Apple's done deals right with on the General screen Motors your car, and or Honda to do this. Siri. Uh. Tell me more. So now, yeah. when you make a phone call, it's going to look something like this. Call John Appleseed. Or this play is a, get lucky. A great, great way to respond to Ford Sync is to build Siri right into or your go to maps. car telematics. Get directions. Or even get your iMessages read to you and you can dictate a response all eyes free. Yeah, so which manufacturers? Yeah, really. It's not going to work on my car. It's Honda. No, it's, it's no older cars. It's Honda and GM, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Oh. Oh, look at that. Honda, Mercedes, Nissan. Maybe it will work in my car. Chevrolet, Kia, Hyundai, Volvo, Acura, no Jaguar. And that's iOS in the car. What? Next, really? The App Store. That's kind of exciting. Now, the New App cars. Store looks beautiful. It's way easier to find Ferrari. apps than ever before. We've added a new feature where you can look for apps based on your age range, kids' categories. Or, of course, Parents not on that list. Love this. They do that with Microsoft. Apps yeah. near me. You can find the most popular apps based on your current location. So now let's How say I'm at AT&T Park in San Francisco, and here are the apps I would see. Popular near me. Or I'm at the Louvre in Paris. Yeah. Yeah, you know. okay. Yeah. Or I'm in Union yeah. Square shopping. I feel like this, I, it's there's some limited this should be a once-in-a-while yeah. feature. The Louvre really is a good great. example. Yeah. Macy's is not. Next but do you download apps while you're at the Louvre or in your hotel before you go to the Louvre? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, no more. Oh, this Thank is goodness. the John McCain so feature. Updates your apps automatically. Yeah. That's Maverick. That's that's Maverick for Maverick. I do hope there's a way to turn that off. There will be. Don't guarantee. Music. Want to update it, but yeah, I love it. The music app in iOS 7 is beyond that's a doubt. an example of copying the and catch-up. Best music player we have ever done. 
The first thing you'll notice is we provide you with beautiful artist images right in your library. And they really put that you just look tap everywhere. an artist and you see the song. You know, I don't know but if they're going to have time for iRadio. There's device. only 10 more minutes you see in the all of your uh, schedule for this from keynote. iCloud. I think they're going right to wrap it up library. after this. And if you want to iTunes hear Radio one of the built songs, into the music app. And you get our beautiful now playing screen. It would have to be just But an it's offhand. not just your purchase music. Uh -huh. In the video apps, you get all of your movies yeah. and TV shows yeah. right from iCloud, right in your library. It's really, really great. Either they're going long, which is fine with me, or uh, if you turn the device sideways, get the you see your albums. You can just swipe to or see more. Wrong. And once you see one you like, you tap and it zooms right in. Now, the music app is the best way to listen to your music. But today, we're introducing an amazing way to discover mm -hmm. new music. Uh -huh. There you go. And we call it iTunes Radio. iTunes Radio. <laughs> Yeah. So not a separate announcement on its own. No. And here's what it looks like. It's built right into the music app, but rather than tell you about it, I'd love to show it to you. Yeah, that would be Eddie Q that would do this Radio. demo. And we'll launch the music app. And the first thing you'll notice is we've got a set of featured stations that our programming team have created. So you can see the songs that are trending on Twitter right now, or even the songs that you guys are all going to hear this week at WWDC. Zoom something the Twitter music app ago. does. Yeah. yeah, Twitter does. I wonder it. if they're plugged like into that. Summer songs. So you just tap. So one of the nicest features of uh, the Zoom Pass was the playlists, the uh, curated playlists. Little Maroon 5 action. I can get behind that. It's because you're young and hip. That's right. And once you have a station you love, you can just tap the eye, and you could share it with a friend, or even create a new station based on this artist or song. That's something Pandora doesn't do. They don't do it by song. The they only song? do it by artist. Mm -hmm. Notice no thumbs down, no no reject, you can, but a double arrow, I guess, so you could skip to the next song. But. Go There's a difference the stations, between saying skipping and I don't like I don't this. Like it, right. stations. Here are some that I previously created. But I feel like doing something new. Now, our music team is providing you with hundreds of stations based on alternative, country, classic rock. But I feel like doing something a little more specific. The issue is going to be cost, if it's ad-supported, and how. How about some Led Zeppelin? It makes sense if you could only do it in the iTunes app, then you could do iAds underneath without interrupting the music. Mm-hmm. Now, that's, that, that's music. None of this Maroon 5. We got some real music now. You need to so it starts off with a great Led Zeppelin song. Um, let's go ahead and see what else is on this station. So he's going to press the next arrow, and he gets Rolling Stones from Let It Bleed. And a great thing is I can always modify the station. It's I can just tap the star, sensible and I can say next. play more songs ah, like this. Here's the thumbs never up. Never play this song. Look at that. Add it to my wish list. Now, I great. like this, so let's Very play nice. some more songs like so this. Nice. It's a never play. Yeah. Yeah. How many skips do you now, get? Another Are they... great feature of iTunes Radio is it keeps track of all of the songs that you're listening to across all the stations, all your devices, and you can get to them by just tapping history. You and always a buy here, button on the right there. And buy always right a there. buy button. And that's iTunes Radio. That's how they get the music industry to go along. Mm -hmm. mm, it's I'd like, like to know you more. can listen whenever you want. Why do you need to buy it? I'd like to know more. So iTunes Radio is built into iOS 7. It works on your iPhone, your iPod Touch, and your iPad. Not desktop. It's also built into oh, iTunes on your Mac okay. and PC. PC. Okay. And even in your living room, built into Apple TV. Beautiful. Apple TV. That's yeah. great. That, it has to work. That's great. That's, that's great. great. iTunes Radio Ad is free, and free with ads. And if you're an iTunes Match subscriber, it's completely so ad free. So $25 a year, it's ad free. That's a good deal. That, that $25 a year that also gets you iTunes Match. Yeah, yeah. Sure. that's a very good deal. Legitimizes your previously we'll acquired U.S. only time. right now. And that's the new music app on All iOS right. 7. I think that's exactly what was predicted, but I think that's exactly right. Ever done. I like Thank the you. UI. Mm -hmm. I think the new that's flat beautiful. UI works really well with that. Yeah. So free with ads, $25 without. Per year. Pandora's got to be shivering in their boots. Of course, this is not an Android feature, but... Uh, 
And, a and you can't use it on Windows. End end. You can't. You, you can. It's at a night. Well, I guess with iTunes you can. Yeah. When you see how, like, we're bringing it all to iPad as well. The whole now, UI is sort of drastically changed. Now, iOS 7 than we had time to talk to you there's about. There's no nice. web today. Things like FaceTime audio. Well, if you had a web audio, version, then you, you really could be a pinball. Audio player. only, high quality audio yeah. calls over Wi-Fi on any iOS device. Per app VPN. That's interesting. Notification sync. So if you dismiss a notification on one device, you don't have to deal Loves with it over feature. and over again on your other devices. Huge. Yeah, pe yep. People wanted that. Like, great feature for that. our users in China with integration of the popular microblogging website site Tencent Weibo. And for those of you who have people who just name. won't let go, yeah. phone, FaceTime, and message blocking. Also, for our enterprise uh, customers, per app VPN. Mm. Now, there's, yeah. That's actually a couple enterprise deal. people in the audience, yeah. all right? So, in addition to all this, there's one feature I want to talk about in a little bit more detail, which is activation lock. So, hundreds of millions of us use Find My iPhone to find our phone when it's just lost in the couch or maybe left at Starbucks, but also when it's been stolen. And now, with activation lock, if a thief tries to turn off Find My iPhone, or if they even wipe the device entirely, Always kind they of will not be able to reactivate system. it that's because awesome. they don't know your iCloud username. Yeah, that's great. That's great. That actually will make a big difference. Mm -hmm. Simple. A simple yeah. thing they should have done from day one. But that's great. We think this is going to be a really powerful theft deterrent. Now, of course, in addition to being a great release for our you users, have to lose it and iOS reset 7 is also a fantastic and major release for our developers as well. The SDK includes over 1,500 new APIs. Can add no applause from the developers on that, I might add. party game controllers, new APIs for taking advantage of multitasking, Beacon iBeacons, I -beacons. For Bluetooth LE micro location, That's a big uh -huh. sprite kit for super fast, power efficient That's game amazing. animations, and UI dy dynamics to bring physics to your UI view animations. M5 game controllers. So That's I interesting. Yeah. Hmm. 60 frames video capture. This so seems iOS like it would require new hardware. available to you developers in beta on the iPhone today. Ah. Jeff, start downloading. Just iPhone, not iPad? No, he said iPad too. Oh. Earlier. Oh, we'll with the beta, I don't know. For iPad coming up in the, near, in the coming weeks. Okay. And for everyone else, a final release coming this, this fall. fall. So I, in conjunction, I presume, with the five, for iPhone new 4 iPhone 5 and also. later, iPad 2 and later, the iPad mini, ah, and the fifth generation that's iPod Touch. Better than I would have expected, that actually. That's good. Not all those features are going to work. Yeah, Thank goes you. back to iPad 2 and iPhone 4. We don't know what it'll well, look like thought, on iOS. And we didn't think it would. I think they've got a lot of designing to do to make it look better on the Yeah, we haven't screen. seen anything, have we? Yeah. We've seen some incredible products. OS X Mavericks, our latest release of the world's most advanced desktop operating system. It's the best OS X yet. The new incredible MacBook Airs with unbelievable battery life, they continue to define the future of the notebooks. The next generation Mac Pro, Apple store is still a closed. revolutionary it computer all day. designed mm -hmm. especially for our power users. I work for iCloud. Create beautiful documents right in your browser on a Mac or a PC. iOS 7, amazing new features and a stunning new user interface. It's the biggest change to iOS since the introduction of iPhone. And iTunes Radio, the absolute best way to discover I'm Really excited music. to play with this. We are incredibly proud of all of these products. They're great examples of what Apple does best. I'd like to thank everyone at Apple that works so hard to create them. I get to work with the most talented and creative people on earth, and it's a joy to serve with them. Thank you. Give yourself a round of applause. I'd like to close this morning with a reminder that our goal at Apple 
is to make amazing products that our customers love. Really great products that enrich people's lives. The words you saw at the beginning of the show are more than just words to us. They're the values we live by. They drive us. You've seen them reflected in our products over the years and just as much in the products this morning. And you'll continue to see these reflected in the products we do in the future. We've created an ad to help us express just how deeply we feel about this. And I'd like to share it with you now. This is it. This is what matters. The experience of a product. How will it make someone feel? Will it make life better? Does it deserve to exist? We spend a lot of time on a few great things until every idea we touch is in slow motion, enhances each life it touches. You may rarely look at it, but you'll always feel it. This is our signature, and it means everything. That's a, it, I think a repositioning a little bit of that. We'll talk about it in a moment. Yeah, they always go for the sentimental. Yeah. Store is up. And I'm ordering. Yep. I'm really glad you like that. You'll begin to see it on TV beginning this evening. Those words mean a great deal to us. Yeah, four gigs and of I memory. Mean a lot to you as well. But you can build Have order for eight gigs. Conference. Enjoy the week. Thank you. So right on time, Tim Cook uh, began uh, exactly at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific, ended at 12.02 Pacific. Two hours, very tight. There was a lot in that. With a Keenan. lot of information and a kind of a break from the traditional rigid format. It started off with effectively an ad, but an ad, an ad for the public, but an ad for developers. And a repositioning of Apple, the new... Uh, touchy-feely, emotional Apple. And I think that's interesting. Apple's always been about products, and it's always been about, as Steve Jobs used to say, the intersection of technology and, and the humanities of the arts. Uh, but I, I don't remember such an emphasis on love before. <laughs> oh, yes, you do. They've always done that. They've always well, talked they've about always love. Done that. deserve to exist. That was the line that stuck out to me as mm. being very consistent with the way Apple has always talked about it. But you're right, it was a, a lot more touchy-feely than, than we're used to. I, I don't think a bad thing. Uh, I think, uh, and, and, and the super slow-mo at the end there the, uh, in the advertisement, I think the underlying message is that it's not about technology, that it's, it's really technology as serving humans. That's not new for Apple, but I, but it, I think it's a really bit of, of kind of emphasis on this now. Uh, that life is too fast, it's too complicated, it's too difficult. We all have that feeling. Right. Slow down. We're about enjoying it. The technology is going to get out of the way, and it's going to be about life. You notice in that ad, which will be, as he said, debuting tonight on national television, you didn't see a lot of products. You saw a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And people in super slow motion <laughs> enjoying themselves. I, I think what they're trying to say is settle down, people. Yeah, we haven't had a whiz-bang new product in, in a few more months than usual. But that's not what we're about. Right. We're about products that make your life better. And that's what we're going to... But, you know, by, by giving iOS a facelift and a very dramatic one, it's as if it is a new product. Right. I mean, it isn't. The hardware is... It, nothing has changed. But all of our... You know, it, it, it quiets a lot of people saying, well, the iPhone hasn't changed in a long time. Well, right. they made it a little longer. Now what, what Now what can they do? Well. A new look on screen. It looks completely different. And the addition of iRadio, which I don't think is insignificant, was only given a few minutes on stage. But mm -hmm. I think that this is actually a very significant product from Apple. We've been treating it that way and talking about it. Apple didn't treat it that way. I thought that was kind of interesting. I'm not sure why. Maybe because of sensitivity to the music industry. 
uh, or to Pandora. But I think iRadio, or as Apple calls it, iTunes Radio, is going to be a very important product from Apple. Two new cloud products that essentially are uh, free. Actually, if you include uh, cloud keychains, three new cloud products that are essentially free. If you're already buying iTunes Match, an ad-free version of iTunes Radio. Uh, if you already are buying iCloud, you'll get the new iWork in the cloud, which includes uh, HTML5 versions of all three apps. We didn't see Keynote, but I presume Keynote is included. It's certainly an icon on the page. Uh, and a surprise, uh, new hardware, but only new MacBook Airs, a 13 and 11-inch, same price points, uh, but the new MacBook Air uh, includes the Haswell fourth-generation uh, Intel processor, starting at 1.3 gigahertz dual-core i5 across the line. The least expensive is the uh, 999 11-inch MacBook Air with 128 gig SSD drive, 4 gigs of memory. Um, the most expensive, well, you can configure it up to almost $2,000 if you buy the 13-inch. And the big story here, because of the Haswell processor, much improved battery life. Uh, they said the 11-inch Air will now have nine, uh, nine hours, hours and the 13-inch yeah. 12, 12 hours. Yeah. And as you pointed out, Tom, Apple's pretty, uh, pretty conservative in their measurements. If they say it, it usually is accurate. I think it's interesting, too, that this was essentially a spec upgrade. For the MacBook Air, which we usually just see them roll out to the store without much right. hoopla. But because of that big battery life and the Haswell jump in performance, I, I rightly so, rolled it in here and said, hey, this is a big deal. Well, and that's where I'm a little bit surprised because if you're going Haswell, you should really go Haswell across the board. I, I wonder if we might see MacBook Pros with Haswell soon anyway. I think uh, maybe at the end of the summer or it could be even with an sooner. iPhone announcement, possibly. Yeah. And, of course, the pro market's going to be very happy that Apple finally said, you know, for a long time, Tim Cook said, we'll have something for you Mac Pro users in 2013. Uh, they finally revealed a new Mac Pro with a very different new design, about one-eighth the volume of the existing cheese grater Mac Pro. It's a cylinder, black, piano black, shiny finish, uh, uh, the ability to rotate. Uh, so there it is so that you can access the ports on the back. It only comes up just a little bit above the power button on the existing Mac Pro. It's a lot smaller. And it's not expandable except through the new Thunderbolt 2. Uh, but that that is very, very fast and uh, will make a very big difference. Fast processors in there, although not Haswell, uh, as far as we can tell, and according to a non-tech, it is an Ivy Bridge Xeon processor. But again, none of this will be available to the fall, so some specs may change. Uh, SSD based on the PCI, third generation PCI e-bus, which means extremely fast SSDs. They said 10 times faster than any Mac hard drive now in existence. Uh, I think that that's going to be a very uh, nice machine for pros, very pricey as well. Uh, dual graphics from AMD. Um, so uh, I think pros will be mollified somewhat by this uh, Mac Pro, and uh, we'll see in the fall. No mention of new iPads, no mention of new iPhones. We didn't expect that, but a much upgraded iOS. No mention of anything wearable. No iWatch, no, no iTV. Nope. No. No, Revival no mention also in, in iOS 7, no like mention of Passbook or uh, some stuff that we heard quite a bit about a year ago. The last WWDC, yeah. that was the big story. That may be something they'll save for a September iPhone announcement. Maybe. Maybe an NFC slash Passbook announcement. I, that makes uh, sense, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what I... Passbook doesn't make a lot of sense without having uh, an NFC chip or some sort of uh, connection that way. And developers can't take that much of advantage of it anyway yeah. without a special partnership. One of the things I found most interesting uh, when they were talking about the new... Well, there were quite a few things that were interesting when they talked about the new Mac OS X. First of all, they acknowledged that they didn't want to be the first Apple operating system to be held out by a sh held up by a shortage of big cats. So they've shifted away from big cats and apparently shifted to California places, starting with a very popular surf spot here in Northern California, Mavericks, um, which is uh, actually very scary and deadly. You only surf that if you know what you're doing. And, and People, people die do die there. And they're professional. Yeah. Big, surfers. big waves uh, caused by an unusual geography there uh, in between Santa Cruz and Half Moon Bay. Um, I've been to Mavericks. I've watched the competitions there. It's a beautiful beach. It's a strange name for an OS, however. Uh, I think that's another thing you're seeing, and you saw it in the ad. Uh, designed in California uh, is going to be a, has always been a part of Apple, but I think that they've probably done some market research and found out that California, which for a while I think was th was seen by the rest of the U.S. as 
kind of uh, earthy, crunchy, uh, what ain't, it's like granola, what ain't fruits is nuts kind of a state, uh, <laughs> uh, has now apparently uh, gained ascendancy and is once again hip and cool. I think worldwide it always has been. So I think it's not a bad association. I don't know. We live in California. We're probably the wrong people to ask. Yeah, I mean, there are definitely people saying that Mavericks doesn't mean anything if you if you don't live in California. Well, there's a meaning, a secondary meaning, which I think Apple intended. Uh huh. Right? They certainly don't mind if yeah. it makes it sound like they're the renegades, the rebels. Here's to the crazy ones. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't think that's necessarily something they don't they, that they didn't know that they you know. Uh, the new Mac Pro, well, we didn't mention, will be assembled in the USA. Made in California and assembled in the USA. That's something Apple would like to say more. Um, so let's talk about OS X. The other big, uh, quite a few new features in OS X. A lot of them cosmetic, tabs in the Finder, tags in the Finder. But things that will be, I think, by real users, welcome. Uh, an updated Safari as well with some good security features. Um, uh, new calendar uh, app. But looks a lot better, frankly, and looks a lot more usable. Uh, a lot of us have moved to third-party calendar apps, busy Cal and so forth, just because the Apple calendar was such a primitive piece of hardware. By the, the way, notice no skeuomorphism in the uh, Apple calendar. No, uh, on the that's, all, the that's all gone. gone. The leather and stitching, gone. And I presume that they will also update Notepad or Notes and, uh, and uh, Although we didn't see that. address book. They didn't huh. show it. Yeah. Um, I think we can say goodbye to skeuomorphism along with Scott Forstall. This is the official uh, coming of uh, the new Johnny Ive. Look, there's OS 10 Mavericks. Let's look quickly at the slideshow. We can see a few of the uh, new features. Um, new photo album uh, on the iOS, by the way, looks really great. That's not on the desktop, I guess. Uh, they're going to um, add some new, uh, uh, you know, under the hood features uh, that should make a significant difference uh, to battery life on the portables. Um what else? Finder tabs. Menus across multiple displays is a big one I liked. Yeah. The multiple display support is a lot better, including the ability to uh, have multiple displays. If you have an Apple TV, one of them can be your big screen television. Yeah. Uh, which I love. I love the idea of uh, sitting with my laptop in my lap, watching something on my TV, and yeah. still being able to use the laptop to... Mm -hmm. I do that all the time. Yeah. Maps and iBooks were, were another, uh, Maps is there already, but they're, it's much improved and you can send locations from your desktop to the phone Maps app. Trying to get people to use Maps app, I guess, again. And iBooks coming to the desktop. Yeah. I think, you know, I, I think it's very clear, and I mentioned it earlier, that what, what we saw here is a combination of uh, copying, catch-up, and innovation. There's a little bit of, in almost equal measure, there's a little bit of, yeah, we got to do tabs in the uh, Finder. We, you know, Pathfinder's done that for years um, that's kind of copying. We've got to do better notifications in iOS. That's kind of catch up to uh, Android. But I think some interesting, innovative new features uh, as well. Uh, certainly, it's a, an aggressive Apple in some respects. Uh, a lot of talk about Android. Um, and a lot of, uh, at least one case where Tim Cook responded to the press who said Apple can't innovate anymore. What was his quote uh i thought that was that was can't innovate my that my, wasn't tim cook can't, or, wasn't it was it no. craig was it federighi uh no it was um phil that? schiller yeah phil, phil schiller. schiller you're right who's always been and, liked, that, and it went always over been very the well. attack dog it went over well and i think rightly so can't innovate my ass is that I what think he that's said that's what he yeah. said yeah i cannot uh, <laughs> innovate his ass. <laughs> i can't innovate I think he said, my can't ass innovate anymore my ass when he was, it was, when he was talking right. about the new mac pro Right. The, the, and I love that. I think that that's a feisty apple that we, we want to see. Uh, I, I think that's a great way to take it head on. They, they removed uh, Google search from Siri, right? It's just Bing it's now? It's Bing. Bing. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Google search is still uh, available, but Bing is now part of Siri. And the, Siri much improved, it looked like. Although we did not see a live demo, which tells me it's not ready yet. The photos from the, the floor are starting to emerge with people taking pictures of the Mac Pros. Yeah, let's take a look at some With of those the because Mac Pro, that I think is there's probably just the one. Uh, quite so it's a, look. a, I mean, it's a, it's something that, it's a physical thing, at least at the, sh at the people who have access in the show, right. rather than just that, that well, highly stylized video. That sometimes we saw. you have after the show a hands-on room. There's really yeah. nothing to have hands-on here. No. Um, but uh, I think there's probably a lot of interest in this. It looks Mac like Pro. something out of Star Wars. It's really. I'm not sure I like, like the the piano. People black. are very split. I think it looks awesome. But uh, well, remember all it, it has like to trash all it has to appeal to is um, the developer because nobody's going to spend the money mm -hmm. on this. I do think it's small. It's very much what we thought it would be, which is a Mac Pro designed for modular use. Uh, small, just slightly above the power button on the cheese grater, which means it's 
one eighth the volume as a, as a Phil Schiller said of the old Mac Pro, uh, and extensibility really primarily through these Thunderbolt two ports, which are fast enough indeed to run pretty much anything else. We don't know the price on this thing. Um, there's another picture. I'd love. Well, let's see the picture in situ or in vitro. What is it? It's in situ. Uh, but I'm trying to find it. Can you? It's somewhere on a Twitter stream. I'm sure somebody's got this. Who was it that you saw that picture? Uh, Clayton Morris has one. Um... You know, Andy Anako decided not to come out uh, for this, and um, I think in hindsight he's probably right. I think there wasn't anything to see in person except for this, and this is a product that isn't going to be out for at least five months, I would guess. Yeah, well, they, they uh, yeah, no pricing either. Yeah. Now, it was a sneak peek. They were going to have another launch event for this, it sounded like. Yeah. Well, maybe not a launch event, but uh, maybe. It's or such roll a, it into This a, is going to be so expensive. Really, the, a lot of what this is about is saying, we can make uh, a Mac in the U.S. And, of course, you can if you're making a Mac uh, that is that where price is no object. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see just how expensive this ends up being. I'm very disappointed that there's no... Uh, this, this rumored 13-inch extra-thin MacBook Pro is not in evidence. I have to think that that's still... Uh, on the product map, but just not for today. Uh, maybe they'll save that for another day. I would guess that's right. Yeah. Uh, let's run over to Apple.com's iOS 7 uh, preview page, which is now uh, up on... Um, and as is the keynote, by the way, if you go to Apple.com. Uh, I, I think there's some very interesting new features uh, in here. Some of them, as I said, copied from Android. This control center that you pull up, very handy. Is that absolutely a feature of many Android phones? The Samsung Galaxies have them. Uh, in fact, it was something that I missed in my HTC One, which they added back into the uh, updated version of the HTC One. So you pull up uh, from uh, the bottom to get the control center. Continue to pull down from the top to get the notifications. Even in the lock screen, the notification center. And one of the things Apple's done in Notification Center in the past is make those live updates, and you can see the calendar is is really uh, there as part of it. Um, mail and so forth uh still i'm sorry to say those tiny little touch targets to close or clear the notifications notification by notification that really frankly is a i think a real deterrent for me to use notifications too much you have to go one by one through each type of notification a new improved multitasking architecture which means that all applications can now multitask in a card like a web os like card interface uh, to see all the multitasking uh, applications running there. That's going to require some real work on the underlying operating system to make sure it doesn't kill the battery. Uh, that's what happens on Android right now. They have this kind of multitasking because it's kind of the Wild West on Android. You, you really have to be careful what you turn on and turn off in terms of multitasking. I like iTunes Radio. I think, Sarah, you're right. I think this is going to be a killer app uh, for everybody. Beautiful looking, too. This is where the new interface shines. Well, and... Ad free if you use iTunes Match. Twenty five bucks a year. That's a bucks much a year better is, deal than anything yeah. else out there. Mm -hmm. uh, the new photos, uh, uh, another example of uh, copying and catch up, but uh, much needed. Actually, in some cases, innovation too. I think those tiny thumbnails. Well, and acts are like great. iPhoto now. Yeah. So that that just makes sense. Yeah. It's catching up with itself. Catch up with itself. Yeah. The ability to sort via uh, location, if you've got location two on. That's right. That was in iPhoto, wasn't it? Uh, AirDrop is nice. The ability, uh, and this is just uh, continues with the progression to get the iPhone unwired. Uh, now you can uh, share, Bump would do this, but you'd have to tap. Right. You can share photos, messages, and so forth. It's your friends in the vicinity are in your share sheet, and you can actually and share been, with them. There have been other third party apps that could do this sort of thing before, Absolutely. but it's nice to just have it built in right. so and you don't have to think about it. And it takes away a little bit of the advertising uh, that uh, Samsung was doing with. You know, people tapping their phones together to share photos <laughs> and movies. Uh, the camera improved to have some uh, additional filters and features. Um, I think this is a nice job. The swiping uh, interface uh, is straight out of uh, Windows uh, Phone uh, and, and makes a lot of sense. Uh, the ability to change aspect ratio just by swiping, to change to a pano just by swiping. I'll probably end up using Panorama a lot more. 
Because I always I think that. All the time. Yeah, I always yeah. think that, and then I realize what the hell I've you're going to do with those images. I've taken maybe two panorama photos. Yeah, because you can't. There's you can't really share them very well. Right. Uh, considerable improvement on the uh, iOS version of Safari as well. Um, and I think this is one of the things that's going to be an interesting uh, improvement to watch is the new cloud keychain, which allows you to save passwords on the desktop and on iOS and share them via iCloud securely. Uh, a cloud keychain is a great idea as long as it's secure. Siri was smarter, as we mentioned. Um, we'll have to watch and see. that uh, It's certainly prettier. And I love the idea of integration into uh, a large number of auto manufacturers. This is the right way to go. Um, you talk to your phone. The display actually reflects the phone's display in the car. Um, nice features. Mail improvements. Weather I can't get too excited about. Weather's the uh, iCar Apple Apple Cards iCards uh, demo. Yeah, you were not impressed by the weather app, <laughs> well, but it's it, a lot nicer than it was. Yeah, but yes, it mimics wanted, what we could already have from a third-party weather app. Yeah, just download another one. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah, there's definitely uh, no shortage of weather apps. Prettier messages interface. The messages interface is nice. Uh, although I, I got to point out, this is uh, something that uh, was available on uh, on Android and other phone platforms for a long time. You could always customize these. Even WhatsApp would let you customize the background and the bubbles and the way it looked. I'm a little disappointed they haven't updated the keyboard. I think that this is one area where Apple's way, way behind. Wait, you there don't, was like, some you don't rumor. like all of the, uh, the uppercase? Is that what you don't well, like? Well, it's it? all uppercase, and it's really you, Apple's keyboard or nothing, and uh -huh. uh, there were rumors. I uh, The Swift Key guy I was talking to said, we think that Apple's going to allow third-party keyboards on iOS 7. No word of that at all. You, you're, you're stuck with the uh, Apple keyboard, and if you don't like it, which I don't, um, that's, a, that's a good reason not to use iOS. Uh, coming this fall, beta is uh, available now on iPhone for developers and will be available soon for iPad. Uh, everything we heard about iOS 7 is true. Flatter. Mm-hmm. Uh, thinner fonts, not black and white. There's still plenty of color. A new color palette, however. You know, a couple of people have pointed out um, that all of these, uh, everything that we've seen so far is all white iPhones, white iPhones, because it looks so nice, because there's so much white space on iOS 7 itself. Good point. I, I'm not suggesting that they're getting rid of black iPhones, but that's the first no, time I've noticed that. there was a rumor that there would, there would be a, a separate color palette for the black like it would tell if you had a black or white iphone oh i hope that. not that, that was that was crazy talk crazy and talk we didn't see that that sounds like fragmentation tom <laughs> uh this is the uh, johnny i video that they uh, showed you can see that on the uh, website as well um so what do you think tom how do you feel you excited i like ios 7 i, I, I am i am excited about that i, I i'm intrigued by uh, the Mac Pro, I would like to see it running in, in person. I'm, a, a little, I'm not sure how the round form factor is going to work, or whether that's even a, a big Boy, deal. Maybe that. it's there's, not a problem. There's a there's a picture of the uh, yeah, Mac Pro. Chrome. I do. I think that's hideous, but okay, just me. Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's cool, but it definitely does look like a trash can. Right? It's like it just looks well, like a really time fancy you throw trash something can. into the top of it. Yeah, and so, and yeah, that's what people are going to do. <laughs> I do want the uh, the wine rack server rack. <laughs> To yeah, be able to I, run a bunch I, of these. I, um, I, I think innovate my ass is not the right phrase to use with that. That's innovation for innovation's sake. I see no advantage to that cylinder. It's designed for, yeah. I mean, It's it, a bad use of volume. Everybody knows that. Anybody who's ever tried to pack a truck knows cylinders are the wrong shape. They're bad it, shape it, for it cooling. There's less well surface area. Anything. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I think uh, piano black's a terrible idea. Nothing but dust and... Uh, See Smudge. nothing but dust and fingerprints and dog I guess nose if you're prints. Thunderbolt for all your expansions, though it it might be nice to array them in a semicircle. Or <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> Try to come up with something there. I think this is a flop, to be honest with you. I think that's uh, that's, that's as bad a design as I've seen out of that. Well, I think it depends on what it looks, what how it runs. It, I, people won't care so much if it, if they don't like the design if it runs. That's exactly significantly right. well. Yeah, that's exactly. Uh, right. And I guarantee you, there'll be a large third party. Uh, case mod. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> market for this. <laughs> Actually, that's kind of interesting. I you just think it looks. Cool. Put it in like a central core. Cr one says we should call it the eye hydrant. Ha! Huh. Lift a leg. <laughs> yeah, be careful with your dogs. Yeah. Well, also, I mean, this is not like a touch screen. How much are people going to be touching it? I don't think you're going to have the fingerprint issues you're thinking of. Well, there's dust. Sure, but. And you're on a computer. I have to dust. It. 
Poland, yeah. You, you already have to dust I, I, I think there's a really bad example of, in a, of a design trumping function. But that's my thought. And I'm looking forward to the tweaks in OS X Mavericks. I, I want to know how much they're going to charge us for that upgrade. I, I think it's that around be, 20 bucks. Yeah, that should be an expensive upgrade. They didn't mention that. They said available this fall. Um, for 20 bucks, those are great. Those are great. I love the tabs in Finder. I know that's a small thing, but that always annoys me when I have to have yeah. a bunch of windows open like that. I do that a lot. I used Pathfinder so, for a long time because of that, mainly because of that feature. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a pretty old app, almost as old as OS X itself. Yeah, they should have had that in a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, all right, Tom Merritt, TNT. Uh, do you want to do a TNT uh, follow-up on this? I bet you do. Uh, no, we're, we're, we we're good? went ahead and pushed out the show early because there was just so much stuff today. Good. So tomorrow's tech news today, we will have wrap-ups of the Xbox announcement, WWDC, and Sony's announcement from later today. Great. I uh, want to thank you for joining us. Sarah Lane as well from TNT, Mac Break, uh, I'm sorry, uh, iPad, iPad today. today and i5 for the iPhone. Mm -hmm. An occasional Mac Break Weekly I, I, I join you guys when you let me. Tomorrow we're going to have a big Mac Break Weekly talk oh, yeah. all about this. Uh, Andy Anako, Alex Lindsay, I think Jason Snell's coming up. Uh, a bunch of Mac folks to talk about this uh, update to iOS, to OS X, a little bit of new hardware. I've got to head over to the uh, Apple store and buy my new MacBook Air. Thank you for joining us. And we thank especially our friends at Slingbox for making our breaking news coverage possible. The Slingbox 500 with Wi-Fi, HDMI connectivity, 1080p video over the Internet. It connects your home theater system to any device you've got with you, including laptop, iPad, iPhone, Android device. Wirelessly archive photos and videos and then enjoy them on TV or at home, wherever you go. I love that ability to just make this a slideshow picture quality is stunning you're going to love the new slingbox you can check it out at amazon at best buy or at slingbox.com slash twit best of all you don't have to buy any special programming packages there's no monthly fees you already paid for it it's your home theater on the internet slingbox.com slash twit let's check in one final time with glenn rubenstein and jeff needles who were covering the microsoft announcement can you give us a summary of what microsoft announced uh, at uh, e3 this morning well, uh, the new Xbox 360, which is going to be available today, uh, 200 for the 4-gigabyte model. Wait a minute. Xbox 360. Yes, yes, the new 360. So they're making a new version of the 360. Yes. Uh, slicker, less power consumption. Uh, that's available today, 300 for the 250-gigabyte model, and uh, 300 for a 4-gigabyte bundle with Connect. Now, of course, the big news, the Xbox One, 499 available in November, available for pre-order now. Amazon has the pre-orders up and running, and our own Jeff Needles. Out mine. Jeff Needles yeah. already got his order in. Yeah, that's that's exciting. That includes Connect for four ninety nine. Yes, built in. Yeah, always on, always watching you. <laughs> yep. And uh, a bunch of new hours. games. Any of those games you're particularly excited about? Uh, new Halo sounds intriguing. Uh, Titan that's Halo Five. Uh, they didn't they give it a title. Say. Okay, it's just a new Halo for for Xbox One. Uh, Battlefield Four is going to have its DLC. Second Assault DLC is going to be first on the Xbox One, so that's a short window of exclusivity, but it looks great running at 60 frames per second. Um, also, I thought one we didn't touch upon earlier, Project Spark. You thought that was interesting. Yeah, that what is like that? It's like a world crafting thing that includes your tablet in some way, They and there was a lot of voice control stuff where you can basically build a world yourself, and it's very, very customizable, and it seems to be very quick. You know, one question that we had watching the Xbox One reveal is the lack of... Uh, support for independent developers. Did they mm -hmm. talk about that at all? Uh, they didn't really touch upon that. I think Minecraft announcing that for the Xbox One is sort of saying, hey, we're going to have our finger on the pulse of the independent development community. Yeah. Of course, Minecraft, I mean, is such a huge phenomenon, but that is still, you know, technically an independent game. And uh, they, they didn't really go into specifics about how they're going to bring in right. independence into the fold. So we'll watch for uh, that. That's something that PlayStation 4 has uh, highlighted. Were there a lot of exclusive titles? Because that's the other thing I think people were waiting for, to see what kind of exclusives. Uh, yeah, there were have. over a dozen. I mean, they had yeah. that Rise, Son of Rome. Rise looked cool. Uh, Killer Instinct, which interesting now to me that that's an, almost a nostalgic throwback, a game that was you know uh, hasn't been seen since the late 90s. Rare is bringing that uh, new version to the Xbox One. Sunset Overdrive, Forza Motorsport 5, of course. Uh, Let's see, uh, D4, uh, Dead Rising 3, Crimson Dragon, The Witcher 3, uh, Battlefield 4, Below, and Halo. Then Titanfall was the last game that showed the Mech Warrior style, huge environment battle game.
So this really made a lot of sense as part two of the Xbox One reveal, where it's all about games, and now price and availability, and now we're really done. Uh, we know what the Xbox One uh, has in store for us. Oh, and let's not forget Twitch.tv built in. Yes. The ability to share instantly live uh, your play action. <laughs> or you action. can go back and edit them, and they yeah. their own upload center where you can share in the Xbox Live environment. That is a, boy, is that a, I think that's a big deal for Twitch.tv. Oh, huge. Uh, and an acknowledgement, really, of this whole new genre. Uh, what, what do they call it? Gameplay TV? Um, it's huge. It's big. Thank you, Glenn Rubenstein. Thank you, Jeffrey Needles, for your coverage of the Microsoft event while we covered WWDC. Thank you all for joining us. This will be a Twitch special, number 160. You can download it or tell your friends, twit.tv slash uh, specials. Uh, as always, on-demand audio and video available in just a few hours as we uh, recompress and uh, edit. Thanks to our sponsor, Slingbox, for making this all possible. Jason Howell, who uh, did double duty today, both TNT Phew. and the special, and he's now exhausted. Oh, no, don't worry. I got Twilight up next. Jason, I need more <laughs> inputs, Howell. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for uh, scrambling, because I know I, put, I kind of tasked you. I hope pleasure. you enjoyed our new Flatter Puppet-Free edition of WWDC coverage. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.